those type of players. So even Craig's reign there were outstanding, and particularly Hartley and, and Stephen Presley are very held in such high regard in Scottish football. And Craig knows them better than I do, but you know I know Paul Hartley and Stephen Presley, and they're gems of boys. More to the point, for our country, they're top footballers. And I said in, during the, the Hibs Hearts game during country the other night that I felt that it's starting to affect even the top professionals like these guys are. So I, I think it's outrageous. I mean, I, I don't have to be as coy with my words as Craig. I'm not managing at that level now, but I think it's outrageous, absolutely outrageous. We know who's picking the team at Hearts. Uh, Vladimir Romanov has, has publicly said that, that he picks the team. There is no doubt about that anymore. Um, who's running the team, though, on a day-to-day -day basis? That's a good question. Valdas Ivanauskas is still on sick leave. Um, one wonders well whether he'll ever return. Uh, that probably seems unlikely now. Edward Malofiev, a couple of weeks ago, appeared to take charge. And now we hear there's Mr. Ria Bovas uh, from Kaunas um, is coming over to, to take, apparently, temporary charge. Massive confusion, Craig, about who's running the show. Yeah, but again, it's easy for us to, to sit here and, uh, and surmise what's going on behind the scenes. There's obviously somebody running the, the, the club on a day-to-day -day basis. Whether it's conducive to putting out uh, a winning football team, that remains to be seen. Um, I don't know who it is, you know, we, and we can sit here and speculate as much as we like. You still, have, you still must have feeling for Hearts, I, oh, I imagine, and, and you must be concerned, presumably. Yeah, I, mean, I don't just have feeling for, for Hearts, I have, uh, I have uh, feelings for a lot of these players, in, in particular the guys that we're talking about this evening, and, and Stephen Presley probably more than most, because I think he's just a smashing guy, you know, forgetting about the football side of things. He's such an honest and hard-working guy, and, um, you know, he must be hurting tonight. Whatever's happened, and, and you know, I have no more knowledge than you have, um, whatever's happened tonight, um, we have to wait and probably wait and find out the actual story before we, we, we sort of jump to conclusions. Um, but if he, he's been left out because of this uh, this incident that happened two or three weeks back at Rickerton when the when the players spoke out, then you know it doesn't bode well for what's going to happen to him and to the rest of the players going forward because obviously Mr. Mr. Roman has decided to to put his foot down and, and let everybody see that. Uh, that he can't be messed about, and, and probably if you look at recent history, he's 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 already done that, hasn't he? You know, two or three times in the past where you think, you know, surely surely George Burley won't won't leave the club when he's had so many good results, but he is a man, Mr. Romanov, who will do things his way. Presley for Dundee United. <laughs> That's just wishful thinking, probably. <laughs> he came in with a real smile on his face. He did. He did. But I mean, you know, Craig says let's not jump to conclusions. I I'm going to jump to conclusions anyway. Are Hearts about to implode, Ian? About to? Well, or have they having lost them? Have they having lost them in the derby? I thought they were, a, you know, a, a shambles of a team compared to what they were. Particularly when you think about the personnel they've got, they still have a spine of a very good football team. But it's not, it's, you know, it's not being picked correctly just now. You know, I really felt for Robbie Nielsen, who, who, who's a great professional. Uh, he was playing wide right. I mean, he was receiving the ball in areas that he never ever receives it. You know, when he plays right back. So uh, I, I, whether they're about to implode, I think they already have, and I think this is the next step towards, you know, the alienation of, of a large Tyne Castle support. Craig's uh, choosing his words carefully, and I quite understand that. But uh, I mean, the other thing I hear out of the dressing room, Ian, is that that uh, the players can't really understand training. The, the, the training has become shambolic for them. Well, some would say it was like that when I was at Dundee United, I that as well, but... Well, that was, I mean, was organised shambles, wasn't it? Well, you hear all these things, and you, you've got to think that, that the language difficulty must be a problem. But you know what, you know, most football clubs are multicultural now, and so they, therefore you get problems at all football clubs. I, I think it's, it's got more to do with it. just the general atmosphere of the football club. There appears to be camps, you know, and splits here, some guys there, some guys there, and... Whatever level you're at, whatever level as a manager, whatever the nationality of a footballer, that is a serious problem. Well, what we do know uh, at this stage is that Stephen Presley isn't here at all, uh, and that uh, Paul Hartley and Robbie Nielsen will start this match on the bench. You may be watching Satanta Sports at the moment, but you won't be able to see our live coverage tonight of Falkirk against Hearts if you're not a subscriber. Here's how to sign up. Press the red button on your remote. Subscribe online by going to 3w's.citanta.com or you can phone us on 08700 50 69 70. You've had the headlines. These are the full teams. Firstly, Falkirk. And uh, John Hughes has picked the team, not surprisingly, that won at Celtic Park 
in the CIS Cup quarterfinals on Wednesday night. What a result that was for them. And five of these players are 21 or under. Jeroen Lambers in goal, back four Jack Ross, Davin Barr, Kenny Milne, Tam Scobie. The, the midfield four Stephen Thompson, Patrick Craig, Stephen O'Donnell and Russell Latapy, the most advanced of the foursome, playing in behind the front two of Anthony Stokes, an 18-year-old with 11 goals already in the SPL. Hat-tricks in his last two games in the, in the league and Alan Gow is up front alongside him. Now, this side just confirms what we've been talking about. Uh, massive changes again in the Hearts lineup. We're pretty used to that, I suppose. Another five alterations made uh, from the team which lost in the derby in the CIS Cup quarterfinals against Hibs on Wednesday night. In come Macarapides, Wallace, Brellier. There's an irony. He's back. Mole and Barassa out. Nielsen, Presley, Hartley, Tal. Goncalves. So that looks to us like Craig Gordon in goals, a back four of Christos Carapides, Marius Zaliukas, Christoph Berra, Lee Wallace, the midfield four, Nerius Barassa, Bruno Aguiar, Julian Brelier, Saul Michael Yunus, uh, Berra's the captain by the way, and up front, Andreas Velichka and Jamie Mole. Well, more to come on Hearts as we get it during the course of the evening. And of course, uh, a big match to be played here as well. Let's have a look back at the five SPO games played already this weekend. We'll start on Saturday and we'll start at Ibrox. And, and now we're in here, it was all looking very frustrating for Rangers. Sent for Chris Boyd was the cry. Only came at half-time as a switch for Lee Martin. And Ian, he did what he generally does. Well, you know, it's a long-standing argument now about whether he should start games and you've got to feel that when Rangers are in the ascendancy they make a lot of chances. So therefore the striker's got one job to do and that's put the ball in the air and he's done it again. I mean, it's a marvellous turn and a great strike in the bottom corner. And he, does, he does that time and time again. It's a decent flip from Purzo. You know, he takes it back on his left foot there and it's just a poacher's goal, isn't it? It's a striker's goal because I tell you what, he's got a lot to do when he receives the ball there. So that was Rangers, one up, one sixty-one minutes. They could have made it safe here. Charlie Adams' delivery, and only Nacho Novo knows uh, how he managed to miss that one. I think an eye on the goalkeeper, Craig. Yeah, I think you're right there. Yeah. The, the ball has travelled a fair distance, and they've had a lot of time to think about that. And maybe that orange jersey coming towards him. I don't know if I, uh, yeah, it's probably just put him off. Uh, he's taken his eye off the ball, and because of that, he's missed the target. Good delivery from Adam, who in the last half dozen games has been one of Rangers' top performers. So is this young man at left back, Stevie Smith. He's in the Scotland B squad, and this was his first ever Rangers top team goal. Some great delivery from him on the left hand side right through the match, and that's a blistering effort. And he looks like a, a real top performer. Yeah, I mean, like everybody else, I, I, I've been very impressed with young Smith this season. He, he, he's a marvellous user of the ball. He's very good one on one situations in the wider areas as well. I'm talking defensively. You sometimes don't expect him to be as far up the pitch into the box as that. Perhaps to cross the ball, but not to finish. But it's a, it's a great strike from from a boy with a with a really big future. And you know, you're told he's a type of boy that keeps his feet in the ground. So he, he has got a big future. He's going to play Scotland B this week. I suggest it wouldn't be long before he's in the full squad. And Craig, I think any win's a good win at the moment for Rangers, isn't it? On the back of defeats by Dundee United and St Johnston. Yeah, they needed to win, uh, first and foremost. I think that the Boyd thing's quite interesting. You know, I think in, in France, I don't think there is such a thing as an out-and-out -out goal scorer. You know, that generally the strikers there play have a lot more to do with the game rather than just scoring goals. And Chris Boyd, in all honesty, that's what he is. He's a penalty box player, and there aren't many of those in France. And I don't know if Paul Le Guin's maybe you know um, not quite come to terms with that fact at, to, in, in this country. But I think when he came on and scored, that just confirms in a lot of Rangers supporters' minds what should be happening. That's what he's there to do. That's what he does. I mean, uh, statistically, uh, this might not be right, but I don't think I think Craig's got a point there. But I don't think there's any of the teams in France that dominate the league quite like Rangers and Celtic. So maybe as a cultural one, a, a, you know, a different type of football. But Rangers and Celtic historically have always needed a player just to stand around the box and put the ball in the net. And you know, that's a, some people think well, that's easy, but it's not easy. That's the hardest job there is to put the ball in the net. Two wins and a draw so far for John Collins as the Hibs manager. This was a 2-0 victory against Inverness. It was Hibs' first win against Cali Thistle in two years. And uh, Stephen Whitaker is on top form at the moment, isn't he? Yeah, he is. A fantastic marauding fullback. Um, that ball's played to him. As soon as he picked it up in his own half, he was already standing 30 yards in the, the Cali half there. And uh, I, I believe that's on target and you've got to put that down as a good save. 
Zubi Malkowski did well here. He, he's been the villain of the piece so often in recent times for Hibs, but he did well there. I'm just very surprised you didn't say the much maligned to uh, Malkowski because that's his first name. <laughs> yes, uh, I mean he has been getting getting pelters, but he did. You know, I think he got a touch there from being onto the post, which makes it a really good double save. This was uh, Graham Bain with a chance for him and So although they lost 2-0, Craig, they did have opportunities here. Yeah, yeah. I mean it can be said of Hibs that they, they are fantastic going forward, but they will give you a chance. And well, you just just stretching a little bit. To be fair, the Hibs defenders have got back onto the line to protect the goalkeeper as well. We talked about Stevie Smith being a player with massive potential, so is Stephen Fletcher of Hibs, isn't he in? Yeah, he is. I mean, I, I remember Tommy Olsen, when he was away with the 19s, when they were very successful, said Fletcher was the pick of the bunch. He's left or right foot. Probably best just as a second striker with John, and uh, that's a great finish. And he, he's a lad with a big future as well. Great yeah. ball, great, sorry, great ball in the box, uh, again by Scott Brown, who, who turns up just everywhere on the pitch, and you see here a really sweet strike. Yeah, good awareness to let the ball through himself there in that tight situation. Here's one of your old pals, Gary McSweegan, uh, with an effort for Cali Thistle. Yeah, Gary's scored goals just about everywhere that he's, uh, that he's been, and I can understand Charlie Christie taking him in just to maybe bring on late in matches, and you're hoping it maybe takes a chance like that one. Now, this is a much talked about incident. Uh, I think Charlie Christie is, is hinting that he might have seen a bit of offside about that when Chris Cullen went through, and he wasn't totally convinced there was enough contact from Mark Brown, who was red carded for, for the offence. What did you think? Well, I think there's an angle here that you see. Mark Brown just pulling his ankle there, and it it looks to me deliberate. He thinks that you know it, he's going to Kim's going to go and, and finish it. Marvelous penalty, but I mean I think it, it's it's harsh, but I think it's definitely a penalty, and it probably is a sending off. So John Collins was happy with that, and Inverness uh, beaten, and Hibbs climbing the table, Craig, and they will be beginning to think now about challenging for second spot, maybe. Yeah, I think they'll have, they'll have gained a lot of confidence from the, the performance as much as the, the victory over Hearts last, uh, last week. You know it was a cup tie, but any time there's a derby match between, uh, between those two Edinburgh teams, one team comes out of that with, uh, if they get the points and they've got confidence. And Hips, for me, have underachieved a little bit this year. Maybe it sounds a little bit strange, but they've got uh, so many good attacking players that they should be winning more matches. Maybe now that John's there um, and the uncertainty has gone regarding managers and such like whether Tony was going to be here or leave or whatever, uh, they'll maybe settle down a little bit, uh, but I do expect to see them climb the table. Ten points out of twelve for Aberdeen in their last four SPL games and they too are climbing the table up to joint second spot for them now. That was Scott Severin early on with a header which came back off the post but Aberdeen weren't to be denied for too much longer and their first goal had quality written all over it with uh, Jamie Smith scoring. Well, and you see here Lee Miller, the confidence flooding back to him. He does really well. Shows great awareness to slip it inside. Another good pass there. And Jamie Smith's capable of that. You know, he's a real quality footballer. Left or right, you're as liable to see him doing that from the other side of the goal. And it is, it's a, it's a top notch finish. And it, it just, there's not a lot of pace in the ball. He, he uses the pace. And it's a fantastic goal. So that was Aberdeen, one up. Um, the equaliser for Motherwell, uh, came in bizarre fashion. Sadly, Michael Hart has to take the credit for it, but uh, Jamie Langfield, I think, could have done a whole lot better here. Yeah, I feel a little bit for Michael. It'll go down as an own goal. Um, I mean, it's arguable for me whether that should go down as, a, as an own goal by Jamie Langfield. Um, but, yeah, it's certainly got Motherwell back in the match, and you know, as, a, as a manager, you're sitting there on the touchline, you see something like that happen, you think, well, maybe it's not going to be a day today. And here's more evidence of what Ian's talking about. Lee Miller is getting better and better at the moment. And th this, this looks simple, but this is a top-quality finish as well, it isn't is, it? Yeah, I, mean, I know Lee very well. And, uh, <laughs> he is a player that thrives in confidence. And I think the key to it is getting Lovell fit as well, because Lovell's excellent. And that, that could be a really good partnership. And, you know, the more Lee plays, the more confident he'll get, the more goals he'll get. Aberdeen 2, Motherwell 1. Now we may well have to get uh, Craig Levine's smile surgically removed at this point because it's six points out of six for him as United manager after the 1-0 win against Kilmarnock and no hunt off target there but he was to be very much on target later on. What did you think of this, the overall performance, Craig? Um, we were poor in the first half, I think both teams to be honest. In fact, Billy Brown and I were talking going down the touchline at half time just about the first half how poor it was I and mean, they had a they had a chance and we had a chance basically that was about it um, this was a good save by by Derek Stilly but at least we got a, a challenge I think David McCracken has got a challenge in at the header rather than allow a, a free header um, Colin Samuel made a big difference for you when he yeah, came Yeah, yeah, young Conway, I took Conway off for half an hour ago, he just 
didn't quite do as well as he had done in previous weeks and, uh, and Ian knows Colin Samuel better than I do and he has got great quality but he's a bit erratic um, but that was a, a fantastic cross and uh, no Hunt probably gets the worst celebration of the year there, I don't know what he's trying to do <laughs> but uh, yeah it was a good goal, great finish. Fantastic technique Ian. It was an outstanding goal I think if no Hunt can get his fair share of tap-ins, you know, he'll become a good player because he, he doesn't score enough. But that is, I mean, that is an unbelievable finish. Do you feel a bit for Craig Brewster at the moment because of what you've achieved in the last couple of weeks with the same players? Yeah, I've, I've been I've been in a similar position myself and I think, you know, all have been in a position where, where you've been, it's been difficult. And sometimes you get to yourself where you can't see a way out. And uh, I think maybe Craig got to that point at, uh, at Dundee United and I don't think there's anything that he can do. You know, I think it, it, the, the pressure comes on him, the players are trying their hardest, believe it or not, to try for the manager to, to pull them out of a hole. But then they start thinking about all the wrong things during the match, they make mistakes, one thing leads to another, they, they, their heads go down a little bit. Um, and all that, I mean, sometimes people say, what have you done? Well, all I've done is just arrived at the club and... I, I, uh, I've got to say, you know, I, I, think, I, I don't think Craig, I think Craig obviously is not going to bum himself up there, but I, I remember when I managed in the SPL... The Are two, you going to bum him up? Well, I am, even though he's sitting there. He's never forgiven me for beating him 4 0 a cup tie, but anyway. The two, <laughs> you the, be <laughs> that? Well, that's it. the two managers when I managed in the SPL that I thought I had to reach their level if I was going to get better. Was, was Martin O'Neill and Craig and I, I think he should take an awful lot of credit for reorganising things and I feel for Craig Brewster, I've went through it, Craig went through it at Leicester City, Sandy Stewart's going through it today, it's not nice but you know the big man must take a lot of credit for that, there's no doubt. Can you have the good grace to blush now? <laughs> <laughs> Just make up, I'm blushing. <laughs> <laughs> Celtic have made it 10 straight wins in the SPL, it's a fantastic run and they're stretching away at the top 15 points ahead now after their 3-1 win at Love Street yesterday, St Mirren really didn't get started, 92 seconds when they went behind, you don't want to do that against Celtic. No, I mean, you don't want to say game over but you know, you're sitting in the, the technical area and you lose, I mean, I'm pretty sure that Gus will be saying keep it tight early on, you know, try and frustrate them in the, in the early part of the match. And you, you barely sat down and, and you find yourself one nothing behind. Um, all credit to, to Gravison because it is a great strike with his, his left foot, but what a bad start for someone. Here comes uh, Thomas Gravison's second, and, and the passing and movement was very good from Celtic, but, but somebody had to get a bit closer here for St Mirren, didn't they? Well, I said when I watched it before, I'm very surprised, knowing Andy Mullen as I do, that he didn't take everything there, just there. But he allowed uh, uh, Thomas Gavin to, to get by him, and, and he got back in time to deflect it in. Deflect it in with his, with his right knee, and uh, but Gravison getting into these forward areas, he was talking about that in the press today, is is very dangerous. No penalty, said Stuart Dougal, for uh, what looked like a rugby tackle from Kurt Broadfoot and Kenny Miller. Penalty, says Craig Levin. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a penalty, simple as that. I think Stuart will look at it, and uh, and he must admit that that was a. A penalty kick. And Sometimes that, the, the, the angle that the referee's at makes it very difficult for him, and I, and I assume this is the case here. Um, but, but yeah, it's a penalty. It's incredibly hard for referees. I mean, I, I'm not one to stick up for referees, but it, we've seen it four or five times. But that comes into the really clear variety. And I yeah. think what would help the relationships between managers and, and, and referees is if, if Sure Dougal came out today and said, Yes, I made a mistake, that was a penalty kick. Well, that could have been significant because Celtic could have gone three up. That could have been hugely significant as well from Arthur Boritz, an absolute blunder, although he did manage to deny Sutton uh, and then Mehmet, so, so the damage wasn't quite as serious as it might have been, Craig. Yes, yeah, an error, and I, I, you know, I think taking a chance there, um, maybe a touch of overconfidence having gone in front, um, and thinking of coasting to victory. And I think what it did that as well was it, it, it just gave St Mirren a little bit of encouragement to get back in and then Billy Mehmet hit the post. Well, when you play, when you're with the small, from one of the, well, not smaller clubs, but certainly smaller than Celtic, you're looking for any tight lift you can get and they've came out of the game after that. And that is a, Simon Lappin's done that two or three times this year, pinpoint cross and a, and a great finish from, from John Sutton. Well, it was his delivery for Billy Mehmet beforehand and it was him who set up uh, Chris Sutton there. He's got a really good left foot. He's got a sweet left foot, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, and if you put if you put that type of ball in and you've got a striker of the quality of, uh, of John Sutton there, then more than likely it'll end up in the back of the net. So St Mirren at that point, hoping they might just get something out of the game, but very quickly, I think it was about 13 minutes later, when Thomas Gravison completed his first ever hat-trick, and uh, there was some doubt on first look at this as to whether it was in, but our angles clearly show that Gary Brady tried, but couldn't actually keep it out. Yeah, no, although, sorry, Craig, yeah, one of you. Yeah, all credit to the, to the officials there, you know, just... Uh, 
made the point that uh, we didn't, uh, they missed the penalty earlier on. But that that was uh, that was good work from the from the linesman. I still call them linesmen, or that old-fashioned, uh, and from the referee because it was it was quite difficult to spot that. Um, you can see it from the cameras, obviously. But uh, well done to them. It was definitely a goal. So a 3-1 win for Celtic at St Mirren, and uh, their position already strong gets stronger by the week. 37 points for them from their 14 matches and a 15-point advantage as we speak over Rangers and Aberdeen Hearts are looking to get back into second spot and will do if they can win here at Falkirk tonight. Hibs up to 19, the complexion is changing for them. They're on 19 along with Inverness and Kilmarnock. Falkirk 17, they'd love to make that 20 if they can beat Hearts tonight and keep their strong run going, looking for a fourth straight victory. St Mirren stay on 16, seven off the bottom. Dundee United 14, Motherwell 12 and Dunfermline three adrift at the bottom on nine. It's Falkirk Hearts here. Here's the Falkirk manager, John Hughes, with Stuart Lovell. John, three great results in, in the last fortnight, in particular the win over Celtic last Tuesday. Have you been really pleased with the way your boys have been playing? I have been for most of the season. I've not had many disappointments in terms of performance. And it's nice that uh, uh, one or two results are starting to go our way. Uh, but I've said that tonight because... You know, I think we've all heard that the, about the Hearts team and who's playing, who's not playing. And I'm a great believer, and I'd rather be up against the devil I know than the team that I don't know. So uh, I said to my boys, concentrate on our performance because what they've been giving me this year has certainly been uh, good enough. And as I say, once we're getting results to go along with that, then the confidence is very good in the dressing room. So hopefully we can carry that on tonight and uh, pick up three points. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned their team. No Presley, no Hartley starting tonight. You couldn't really have a better opportunity to, to beat Hearts at the minute. Yeah, I know where you're coming from, but I'm a great believer. You know, I'd like to know what I'm playing against because some of the other guys, we've seen Hearts a few times, but first and foremost, I don't even know what formation they're going to play. So um, I think it's imperative that we concentrate on what we're doing. Um, we're a good passing side, get it down and pass it. And we're scoring goals off late, so let's go and concentrate on that. Uh, we'll try to work out set plays, corners against, everything like that. And then you don't know who they're going to send up because it's... You know, the team's changed completely, and uh, so the boys will just have to organise it as they go. They all, they've all got their job to do, they all know who should be marking, and it's just a matter of once you do it once, then just repeat that f for the whole night. Uh, and as I say to them, let's go and put a show on. You know, we're in front of the cameras Monday night, spotlight's on top of us, let's go and show, uh, put a right show on. I have to say this, for me, Big Elvis is a stalwart, Hearts legend, and uh, he's done whatever a captain should do, he stood up. And he says what he had to say for his team. And now I wouldn't like to think that he's going to get the backlash of that. And just because um, he's no playing tonight, I don't know what the reason is, but I wouldn't like to think it's because he's done what a real captain should do. Uh, um, that's the reason that they've left him out. Talking about your own team, your young striker, Anthony Stokes, has been, been on fire. Ten goals in the last five games. What's been the catalyst for that? Well, I think it's Latapi and Gil. Uh, we, when we first when they first come here, we played them. We sort of played with two wingers and him through the middle himself, and we know it didn't really suit him. He also once we got, he got a number of games under his belt, he was getting fitter. Now we play Alan Gill up beside him and Latapi just off them, and they three they're capable of going, winning, scoring goals and winning any match. And you know, long may that continue. He'd be the first one to tell you he's a very uh, humble guy. He'd be the first one to tell you it's all due to his teammates. Um, we're all desperate for uh, Gilzer to score, uh, score a goal. He's been outstanding over the last month. And I just might think, think tonight it might be his night tonight. John, we wish you well tonight. Cheers, thanks very much. We hear that uh, Roy Keane, the Sunderland manager, is here. And 18-year-old Anthony Stokes of, of Falkirk, on loan, of course, from Arsenal, had a trial at Sunderland in the summer. And Roy Keane might just be having a little look because he's been in some form. 11 goals in 10 appearances for Falkirk. 10 goals in his last five games, Young Player of the Month for October, and he's in the Republic of Ireland B squad tomorrow night to face Scotland. He's doing OK. <laughs> Not bad month or two for him, to be honest. Um, yeah, he's a young lad who, when Arsenal signed him, I believe they gave him an awful lot of money to, to send him over from, from Ireland because they believed that he was going to be a top player. But his career stalled a little bit. I mean, you saying that's no embarrassment not to get into the, to the Arsenal team right away. But he seems to have found um, a little bit of confidence playing regular football and uh, he's been fantastic, hasn't he? Falkirk want to keep him beyond January, they've got him on loan until then, but obviously this sort of form has made other people 
look up and take notice. Well, definitely. I mean, he has been over six, seven weeks. He's been absolutely terrific. And, but I think he's got to recognise that Falkirk have given him that platform. I think sometimes players forget that very quickly. But, you know, he's come to prominence because John Hughes has given him the opportunity and the platform to play. And Yogi says he's a, he's a, he's a good type, so uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they're able to do that for another... And I, I think it would benefit the boy having another four months up here. Yeah, and I think Liam Brady's the, the head of youth development at Arsenal, and, and I think he likes the way Falkirk go about their business. Uh, and obviously the fact he's playing regularly, scoring regularly, it's got to be good for Arsenal as well. Yeah, well, I think, believe it or not, I think bringing Patrick Craig to the club was the, the start of it, because he's friendly with O'Donnell and, uh, and with Stokes. And uh, you know, I do believe that the Arsenal. I mean, a lot of clubs might take might take Stokes back in January, and capitalise on the fact that he's scoring goals and try and sell him. But I don't think Arsenal are that type of club. You know, I had dealings with them down at Leicester, one of their players on loan, and they are very interested in how their young players get on. And I'm pretty sure they're monitoring his progress. Um, and you know, I think the best thing for him, as Ian said, would be to stay where he is finish the season because he's going to go off the boil a little but he's still a young boy and this will probably be the most it will be in fact the most consecutive first team matches he's ever played and he will tail off a little bit but I think it will do him the world of good to go through that process as well at Falkirk. He's 18, he's 38 um, but he's playing like an 18 year old at the moment and, and Ian McCall here as well as being a member of the Craig Levine fan club is also a member of the Russell Latham well, fan club. Well not only is he an, he's an outstanding player he's a great lad you know and uh, I, mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Roy Keane was watching him tonight and taking me to Sunderland, but <laughs> he's, been, he's been fantastic. I had him at Dundee United and, uh, you know, it's such a hard doesn't to let him go, but we had Charlie Miller at the time and putting the two of them in the one team would just, maybe else would get, get a touch of the ball, so, uh, but he, he has, he, he's been fantastic and he's, he's just such a lovely guy and his skills in training, I mean, he's, he's unbelievable in training, so uh, he deserves having he gets in the game. And when John Hughes there in the interview with Stuart was explaining the form of Anthony Stokes, the name he came up with very quickly was Russell Latipi. Well, the team is almost set up to suit him, if you know what I mean. The, the, uh, John's created this uh, position for Russell just in behind the strikers. I've actually seen him playing just in front of the back four as well, but he has to play in a pocket where he doesn't really have an awful lot of running to do, but he can use his, uh, his football and brain. And, uh, you know, if you go back and look at a lot of the goals that Anthony Stokes has been involved in, a lot of goals that Falkirk have, have had this season, that uh, this little guy's been central to a lot of them. That's where he wants to play, though. Yogi has to try, they, they want to push him up the pitch, because he always wants to come back and play in front of back four. That's where he wants to play, get the ball past it, get the ball past it, but they, they, they've been on it, I'm on it, I'm on it. No, we need you in the last third of the field, and it's paid dividends the last six, seven games. Will he take off the tee, Cozy? Knowing Russell, he might play in that. <laughs> and it won't make much of a difference either. A funny thing's happened at Falkirk tonight. Julian Brellier is starting for Hearts amid all the uh, exclusions from the team tonight and the, the drama surrounding the, the team selection. The return of Julian Brellier, his last, his last start, Craig, was away to Sparta Prague in September and the Hearts fans continually chant his name when he's not there. Yeah, because he's a good player. Um, and I think that the Hearts' most successful uh, period last season was when him and uh, Paul Hartley played together in central midfield because they do complement each other. And, ha and Hearts have made that many changes over recent, uh, well, recent months and years that they haven't really got back to that point where they've got a settled midfield. And you know maybe Julian coming back in will give him a little bit more solidity in there. Uh, I, I quite like Aguilar. I think he's a good player. Although I'd much rather see Hartley playing in there. Um, and that, that area, the, the field tonight, with him being back, it most certainly has a more solid look to it. Would it be cynical of me, Ian, to suggest that uh, the reason Julian really doesn't play regularly and Takis Fisas as well is because George Burley signed them? Well, if that's true, I mean, it's incredibly petty, but I mean, I think Julian Brayley is a good player, he does come with Paul Hartley, but I think Romanoff himself has, has turned him into this mythical type figure, this Julian Brayley, and he's a cult figure now, and I think he's a good player, but the way the Hearts fans go on about him now, because he's not been in the team, it's as if he's a, he's a Diego Maradona, a world beater, but what he did do was he allowed Paul Hartley to go and be the best forward midfield player in Scotland. He makes Hearts tick, doesn't he, in some ways, yeah, he allows Paul Hartley to play? Definitely, I mean, Hartley at his best in the last couple of seasons, Craig knows better than me was outstanding. Okay, so Brelier plays, Christophe Berra plays in central defence, he also captains Hearts at the age of 21 in the absence of Stephen Presley alongside uh, Valiukas at the back, so even more responsibility on his young shoulders, Greg. Yeah, it's a big ask for him. Yeah. He's a young lad who has a lot of uh, attributes to be a very good centre back. This, again, for, for him, will be a, a probably the most sustained period of first-team matches, and he's improving. 
whether he's captain material at this minute in time, I'm not so sure. Um, and that's not uh, being derogatory to, towards young Chris Love. I just think that he probably needs to learn a lot more before he's put in to a position where he's made captain of a side that, uh, that are struggling. Here's Edward Molofiev, uh, the sporting director uh, at heart. Uh, he's not speaking to us pretty much. Nobody's speaking to us from a Hearts point of view pretty much. But the Hearts fans are talking and uh, they had plenty to say when we broke the news to them as they were arriving here in Falkirk uh, about the fact that Stephen Presley's not here at all and that Paul Hartley and Robbie Nielsen would start on the bench. Well, I think it's, I think it's out of order. Uh, Presley's been our captain for a long time now and it's hard to take. And it's also hard to take a rumour that Hartley's not playing either. I think it's absolutely scandalous for speaking out, uh, more or less telling the truth what's going on. I think it's scandalous that he's been, they've been penalised for it. It's ridiculous. People like uh, Michaelinus who underperform week in, week out, and they still get a jersey. It, it, it's not on. Basically, the Hearts fans are, are coming to the end of their tether, and I hope Vladimir Romanov listens to the Hearts fans. We've got the best captain in the country, so why is he dropped? Is he dropped because of a bad captain? Is he dropped because of a bad player? He's dropped because he spoke against that bloody dictator. He's bang out of Can I put Romanoff in a submarine and send him back to your salt mine? <laughs> Say what you think, for goodness sake. Now, Craig here has uh, wrapped me across the knuckles uh, already for jumping to conclusions uh, about the, the heart situation. But Craig, in the absence of uh, somebody coming out and doing an interview and explaining what's happening and why it's happening, that's all we can really do, isn't it? You're doing your job, Rob. <laughs> that's what you're doing. Um, yeah, but I, I mean, I know Stephen Presley, and uh, you know, I, I, the, the, I thought what was the point I was making is that it was stormed out. That's not like uh, Stephen Presley. And I'd be surprised if that. It could be the final score for him. Well, I, I, he's not been in this circum this set of circumstances. is very extreme, though, and it's maybe making him do something very out of character. What does it do to the game tonight, Craig? Do you think? Interesting. It's interesting. Uh, there are now. Of, of the record and three, uh, <laughs> three the record and three. <laughs> uh, Craig Gordon's the only one left. Um, they brought Brelly back in, maybe to appease the fans. I don't know. Um, Against a Falkirk team that's flying. Yeah, I, I, I'm struggling to, to guess what's going to happen. What, what I do know is if, if Hearts don't put on a decent performance tonight and uh, and you know at least get a draw, maybe not win the match, uh, at least get a draw then the supporters will be terribly upset tomorrow. Yeah. Well, I think they're going to be upset no matter what the result is. I've got to say, I think uh, the newspapers, no matter how well Hearts play tonight, are going to carry this story. It's going to be sensationalised. It is a sensational story. You know, not only is, is Stephen Presley captain of Hearts, he's the mainstay of, of the resurgent national team under Walter Smith. You know, and he's an extremely popular person. So, you know, I, I don't see how, where they go from here, and I tell you, yeah, I think for, if you were a betting man, I would think Falkirk are a very good price tonight. Watch it with us, and the only way to see the live matches on Santa Sports is to subscribe. Here's what to do, press the red button on your remote, log on to Satanta.com or telephone us, and that's the number 08700 50 70. Well, we've had a huge helping of drama already tonight. I wonder what's to come. Watch it with these two, Scott Booth alongside Ian Crocker. Rob Falkirk's fine form, completely overshadowed by another dramatic day for Hearts. What must be going through the minds of these players, Scott? Well, for me as an ex-player, I think it's an absolute joke. I mean, this team has been dismantled bit by bit. I think just watching the players before the game, they look completely disillusioned. And it's been a dressing that's kept this team together over the last couple of seasons. And the one thing for me is a big but here. I still believe that they can get a result tonight, even against a more than decent Falkirk. Well, Falkirk are unchanged. Can the SPL's top scorer, Anthony Stokes, continue his goal spree? Back-to-back -back hat tricks in the league, ten goals in his last five games. He's on loan from Arsenal and he's been superb. Pat Craig and Stephen O'Donnell were also groomed by the Gunners before making permanent moves here. Kenny Milne started his career at Haas. Russell Latterby used to torment them in Edinburgh derbies when at Hibs. Falkirk was set out as a 4-3-1-2. Patrick Craig will protect Baron Mellon in centre of defence and put himself about in his usual fashion. Width will be given through Thompson and O'Donnell, with Latvi playing in the hole behind Stokes and Gow. And if the undoubted quality of that front three combine well tonight, Hearts may get a rough ride. Hearts team news. Oh dear, where do we start? Skipper Stephen Presley left out, Paul Hartley and Robbie Nielsen left on the bench. 
Five changes from the side beaten at Hibs in the League Cup with Karapidis, Wallace, Barassa, Mole and Brelier coming in. It's Brelier's first start since September. Hearts fans have wanted him in the team, but now he's in. Presley, Hartley and Nilsson are out. You couldn't make it up. Well, it's absolutely anyone's guess, but Hearts look to be playing a 4-4-2 tonight. Gordon retains his place, but incredibly, Captain Stephen Presley doesn't. So we have an untried back four in the shape of Karadipis, Zaliukas, Berra and Wallace. Two sitting midfield players in Aguirre and Umbrelli, with maybe Aguirre pushing that bit further forward. Brassa and Mikko Yunus offer pace and development in wild, wide areas. And Mole partners the informed Velichka up front. Well, Mark Twaddle has recovered from the ankle knot that forced him to miss the Celtic Cup tie, but he only makes the bench. Talisman Paul Hartley, just a sub for Hearts, so too Robbie Nilsson, and Pospisil is back after three months out injured. Well, sometimes you can't be sure what's going on at Hearts, but you can be sure there's lots going on. Against such a baffling backdrop, the team could return to second place tonight if they manage a first win in six games. If they lose, these fans are going to have a lot to say about that team selection. And what must they be thinking about at this point in time? They'll have heard now the situation tonight, the players have been left out again. And they'll be wondering what's going on in, the, in behind the scenes and exactly where this club's going to go to. And it's a, a real shame because they've been a great club. And just at the moment, you're not sure where they're going. Well, so far this season, they've seen 85 changes in team selection. And counting. Still incredible, they have a chance to go second. Paul Kirk have played some tidy football this season. They're buzzing after scoring eight goals in their last two league games and then knocking Celtic out of the League Cup on penalties. So Christoph Abera is given the captain's armband. Craig Gordon has kept his place. All the best guys, we'll get it here. the man in charge. Three points tonight really would make a big difference to these two teams. They would make significant moves up the table. The stakes are high and Stokes is high. For Kirk Hart next. It's another Manic Monday in the SPL. The sounds of silence at Falkirk at the end of Remembrance Weekend. Just another Monday for Hearts, or maybe not. All sorts of uh, dramatic happenings uh, in the build-up to this match. It's Falkirk against Hearts. Hearts can go back to second spot if they win here. Falkirk looking for their fourth straight win. Back to Scott and back to Ian. Well, since they returned to the top flight, Falkirk have uh, yet to beat Hearts, but they held them to a draw at Tancastle early season and they really must fancy their chances tonight. The Hearts uh, players did uh, go into a huddle just before kick-off, presumably to introduce themselves to each other. A much-changed Hearts team will kick us off. They slip to fourth in the table, overtaken by Rangers and Aberdeen, but they could leapfrog both tonight and move to just within 13 points of Celtic. Paul Kirk could jump from 8th to 5th. And that would be a significant rise for them. They would move above Kilmana, Inverness, Cali, Thistle and Hibbs. A 
another big surprise for the evening is that I got the formation of Hearts right. It is a 4-4-2. Well, the uh, Hearts camp does not appear to be at all happy at the moment. Whereas Falkirk have been very much in it together lately. And they've played some terrific football too. Here's Craig. Scobie. And now O'Donnell. Scobie. Belichka, who scored Hart's last four goals. Aguiar challenging Craig, and here is Mikalunis. Mikalunis supported by Wallace. Scobie's clearance drops only to Belichka. And Barassa slipped. Barassa now trying to sneak Belichka in, but that won't happen. Certainly a lively start from Hearts. That's what John Hughes was saying before the game. It's a worry about the unknown. You just don't know how Hearts are going to play tonight. And some of the players you haven't seen that often. Paul Hartley and Robbie Nielsen amongst the subs for Hearts tonight. Stephen Presley left out of the squad. Another, well, frankly, ridiculous day in the life of Hearts. Yeah, and I know these players will be absolutely gutted they can't take part tonight. Yeah, Mike McCurry's in charge tonight, and this is why he's given a free kick. Yeah, I think Barassi just got one a few minutes earlier, and it's a little bit of revenge. on by Gao for Stokes, and Gao takes over again. Oh, and it actually came off Pera from Wallace's clearance. Yeah, as the ball comes through, when the final clearance goes, it could go anywhere, really. Jamie Mull chasing, but there's Kenny Milne, who is facing his former club, so he'll be well up for it tonight. Kirk with goals galore in their last couple of league games against the United and Dunfermline. Here's Barassa. Now Mole. Aguiar's got into a good position and nobody's gone with him. But Mole's been held up by Mill. Nicolunas. Here's Barassa. His season is only just starting after injury. Thompson now. Here's Ross. Thompson. A difficult decision that for Mike McCurry. As a brilliant concedes the free kick for taking out Ross. Yeah, it was good passing movement from Falkirk. I think Thompson and O'Donnell will have to be on their toes tonight. Certainly with Aguiar and Brelli in the, in the middle. They're very good at nipping the ball. They'll have to be watchful of the counter-attack. Russell Latterby takes it. Nothing doing for Gao. Barassa. Got away from Thompson, and this could be ominous for Falkirk. Barassa will take this throw. He's got Karapidis nearby, the uh, Greek defender. He hasn't figured much, but uh, Hart certainly making full use of their squad. Noel's cross is a good one. Nicolunis. Yeah, it was a good crossing from Mole. A nice deep one to the back post. 
Just looking for someone to come and attack it. It's away by Scobie. Oh, that's going to be a free kick for Hearts. Fouled by Gao on Julian Brelier. Yeah, Brelier doing his work in midfield. Makes it so hard to win the ball from. I think it's been quite easy so far for Hearts from the point of view that they have stuck with a 4-4-2 formation. Probably the easiest formation to play when you have a number of players who don't really know each other. Aguilar, closely watched by Craig and it'll be gathered by Jerome Lambers who has replaced Scott Higgins as first choice keeper after Higgins had a bit of a mare at Inverness County Thistle recently. Dutchman who was set to play non-league football in Holland and go back to work as a carpenter before Falkirk came in for him. Darren Barr wanted uh, Lambers to perhaps come, but he and Mill conspired a clear. Brilliant. Ironically, starting the match tonight, unlike one or two other fans' favourites. Free kick is given against Craig as he brought down Velichka. He's away a few fouls. Yeah, and with Mole and Velichka, their hearts do have pace and they have strength. Bruno Aguiar then to take this free kick for Hearts. And Velichka almost scored again, but for a super save from Lambers. First and foremost, a fantastic ball in. Velichka gets a good header on it, that's a great save. Reaction same from Lambers, just tips it over. Velichka, scorer at Hearts, last four goals. Nearly made it five in a row there. Lambers. Outstanding. Aguiar will try again though, and Lambers forced into action again. And possibly again, this time it's a safe catch. Oh, kept him busy there. That's yeah, good goalkeeping. He's commanding his area. problem for Falkirk at the moment is they can't really get Latipi on the ball in the midfield giving the ball away a little bit too easily not getting started we'll talk of that for Lambers he's going to have to uh, belt it out for a throw there's a fair breeze around the Falkirk stadium tonight there has been a fair bit of rain as well but it's stopped for the time being Kalunas found Ross in his way. Falkirk looking to break out. Hitchka certainly felt that. Just talking about Latipi there, he's kind of pulled out a little bit further wide on the right-hand side, maybe to try and get away from Brelli and Aguiar. Clearance. Nice touch from Gao, and now the man of the moment in the SPL, Anthony Stokes. Mike McCurry's played the advantage. Craig for Ross. Latterby. Just up there has gone out to deal with him. Ben wearing the captain's armband tonight in the absence of Stephen Presley. Amazingly left out. You really have to feel for Stephen Presley. He's been a stalwart, but he's also been well respected right throughout the turmoil that Hearts have had over the past couple of seasons.
Tom Hughes, a one-time foe of Hearts at Hibs. Succeeded Ian McCall here as manager. Won the uh, first division title twice. First time, though, they weren't allowed up because of the state of their ground. The Falkirk Stadium has hardly been home street home for them, though. They've only won four out of 26 SPL matches here. It's certainly nowhere near as intimidating as their very, very old ground at Brockville. It's been a cagey start from both sides, really, sizing each other up. Falkirk not getting on the ball as much as they'd like. Hearts have begun, begun the game quite well, but again, they do seem to not quite know exactly where they should be, and that's going to be the case when there's a lot of new players on the side. Well, Nico Lunis is chasing this. Barras has got himself into the box, so is Aguiar. And Scobie clears it. Now Velichka. Part of the uh, extensive Lithuanian collection at Hearts. <laughs> and has started to rain now. And it's on cue. Nikolunis snuffed out by Craig. He snuffs out a fair bit. Yeah, Craig's a great player to have in there. Always snapping around the ankles, doesn't mind a dig. He's got a good engine, runs around all day for you. One of several who have made the move from Arsenal to Falkirk due to the uh, friendship between John Hughes and Liam Brady down at Arsenal. Ross. Karapidis for Barassa. Now Aguiar. Stephen Thompson for Alan Gao. Aguiar quickly upon him. It's going to come through to Thompson. Latterby. Didn't quite carry to Gao. Brellier made sure of that. Walker will try another route. Latifi, usually involved in any route they try. He's lost it though to Aguiar. Walker could be stretched here. Velichka. He's having a charge. Here's Velichka, but uh, typically Craig has had enough of him. Yeah, it's great tracking back from Craig. It was initially good ball retention from Falkirk until that we lost it. Stokes. It's Zaliukas who's uh, playing as a centre half today, which he is uh, apparently capable of doing in his career, but of course Hearts fans have usually seen him in midfield. Surging run this. From Lee Wallace. Here's Nicolunas. Wallace, no free kick. Mike McCurry had a decent view. Yeah, and the conditions are now terrible here. It's a real wind. The rain's pelting down. No ideal conditions, as you can see. I knew I shouldn't have said it had stopped raining five minutes ago. Oh, you can just see Jack Ross hobbling slightly, looks to have a bit of a problem. Kenny Milne has to be wary of Noel's presence. Hart's claiming a back pass. Hearts were claiming a back pass. Not quite sure the communication 
wasn't great at the back from Falkirk. Oh, what a beautiful day. Here's Barassa, and he's been tripped by O'Donnell. Lafferty's having a quick change of boots. And Jack Ross is uh, not going to be able to continue with that uh, knock that Scott mentioned. So they're going to bring on Carl Dodd in his place. So Fokker forced into an early change. Looks like that is putting his water skis on. <laughs> A wise move. So Jack Ross having to uh, limp off. With just a quarter of an hour of the game gone, John Hughes having to make that change. Along comes Carl Dodd, who was born in Australia to Scottish parents. And he will slot into that right back role. Also, Latterby has sorted out his boots, he's back on. Falkirk have a free kick to defend. Aguiar takes it. Cameron Peters putting himself about to little effect. And so far in the game, Hearts have looked dangerous when they've just thumped the ball in the box. Got a good height advantage in there. This game definitely needs something. Needs a player to take a hold of the match, start to control it. Really scrappy at the moment. It's come off Scobie's head, it will be a heart's throw. Karapidis signed from Payok Salonika, early season. Picked up an injury actually. So it's a rare glimpse of him tonight. Hearts making five changes from the team that lost at Hibs in the League Cup. But of course, the big news of the night, Stephen Presley not involved at all, not impressed at all, and Paul Hartley left on the bench. Never a dull moment at Hearts, but a few strange moments. To be fair to the Hearts players, they have gone about this so far anyway, in a real professional manner. When other players don't play, it gives some new players a real chance. Well, Hearts have used 32 different players so far this season. Incidentally, uh, Stephen Banks, the second-choice keeper, is not on the bench tonight. He is here, and he is fit, but they have put young Jamie McDonald down as sub-keeper instead. Yeah, it made you wonder if there's a problem there with Banks before the game. Maybe that's why Craig Gordon started the game. You just never know. Well, that's for sure at the moment with Hearts. You just don't know what's going on in the background. Up towards young Jamie. No. Stop Berra launching it towards Velichka, but he's not going to get there in time. Certainly been amongst the goals lately, five in his last six games. He scored at Celtic last week, and in fact, could have had a hat trick easily. Yeah, he looks to be a decent striker, very athletic, he's very strong, he's pacey. He certainly got an eye for goal, and even after missing a couple of chances, went back for more. Yes, but they actually watered the pitch before kickoff. Here's 
Grelier, and he's lost it. And now Latifi just skipped the wrong side of Stokes. Later you can call or text to vote for your Bank of Scotland Man of the Match, and if you choose the same as Scott Booth does and you're picked out as the winner, you'll get a signed shirt. Not too many early contenders. Yeah, you can see at the moment, Grelia, quite obviously, not really up to much sharpness, a couple of times giving the ball away. That's to be expected when we've sat so long in the stands. Lee Wallace will take this over. Aguiar, and now Mikelunis. Oh, and Velichka! Another great stop from Lambers, who's certainly winning his personal duel with Velichka, who's down hurt. He stayed down, and I think uh, they might kick the ball out if Pat Mike McCarry's blown his whistle. Takes a really good ball in. Velichka times it well, knows it's going to skid off the ground. Just goes straight at Lambers. It's a half shot, half cross. Not really going anywhere, but Velichka sees it early. It's a brave header. Lambers deals with it. Velichka got uh, nailed by Scobie. And a bit of blood. Yeah, but as I said earlier, he is brave. He has the physique for that. And he obviously wants to score. Approaching the midway point of the first half, well, that's twice that Lambers has uh, saved from Velichka. Yeah, they've certainly had the better chances and they've looked the more dangerous team. Craig. Stokes making a game attempt at a forlorn attempt to get there. We had a little nibble then, Anthony Stokes, at Christoph Berra. And Mike McCurry's having none of that. Yeah, it was good defending from Vera. Just using his physique to hold off Stokes. Stokes getting frustrated, has a little swipe there. Something we don't want to see. Anthony Stokes is on a flight to Dublin in the morning because he's in the Ireland B squad facing Scotland tomorrow night. Although, uh, bearing in mind he's in action tonight, probably the best he can hope for is a bit of action late on next up for Falkirk it's a trip to Kilmarnock Jim Jeffries and Billy Brown the uh, former management duo of Hearts are there and Gus McPherson and St Mirren never this is the opportunity to take in a game either that's a fee for Stokes but Gordon is going to smother that That's why Stokes has been scoring a lot of goals. It was the first time that Latipi found a little bit of room. It's quite brilliant the way he takes the ball in the same movement. His left foot plays the ball through to Stokes. Maybe just because of surface, a little bit skiddy, it took the ball through to Gordon. Darren Barr. Ah, the good old bandage. Felicka's back on. That looks a bit like Elvis there, doesn't it? <laughs> Scooby stopped in his tracks by Karapidis. You can see that Falkirk are trying to get their passing game going, but Mikhail Yunus and Barras are tucking in well. Helping out Aguiar and Brelier. And at the moment, the Hearts back four look absolutely solid. Scobie, just 18, will take this throw. Aguiar quickly in, but Craig has it now and fins off Barassa. Might have got a free kick had he gone down. Probably would have done actually. Just a Berra takes command. Scobie. For Craig Thompson, now Bart is Dodd, who's come on to the injured Ross, and that's gone out. Well, that's just one of the few signs that Falkirk are getting it together. 
I think if Hearts sit deep with two banks of four, it's going to be hard to penetrate. Latapi. Can he open the door? Alan Gow trying to get to it. But the threat ended by Wallace's intervention. Hearts are taking a real risk by allowing Latipe the ball with no one closing him down just outside their box. They keep doing that, eventually he will unlock that defence. Wallace. Thompson. Scobie. Kurt not creating too much in the way of chances so far, but here's Craig. He's got Dodd outside. And it's going to be a free kick to Falkirk. Lee Wallace asked the question why. And again, it's good passing from Falkirk, just working the ball into a wide area. And Wallace with his hands up. delivers but it's cleared by Barassa. Mikelunas trying to steam away. He's got Mole ahead of him. Neatly done by Mikelunas. Stephen Thompson minding the shot. And it was only him guarding Jamie Mole. It was certainly a vital touch from Thompson. Valichka. He's got the free kick in front and Fulker felt that he went down a little too easy for their liking. Well, he's not scared to run at defences. Look to have gone down very easily there. He gets a free kick in a dangerous area, and they have looked strong so far in the air. Aguiar takes it. gone wide but there was certainly a concern as Berra threatened the bounce. Well John Hughes going crazy on the bench because he sees that there's no one attacking this ball for Falkirk. It's the third occasion there's been a free header for a Hearts player. Whoever is the manager for Hearts at the moment, I'm pretty sure they'll be fairly happy with the way things are going. Well, whoever is today. <laughs> Woods come through, two Stokes. And now Gao. And Stephen Thompson! And it fizzed its way through to Gordon. Also kick that, but it's going to be captured by Landers. Yes, yeah, a good strike from Thompson. And even Craig Gordon found it difficult to deal with because of the surface. It's bouncing and skidding and moving. He gets his body behind it. Craig Gordon, who made that uh, bizarre error at Celtic last week, but he has actually saved a number of points for uh, Hearts this season in fine form. Yeah, and almost one in three of his games for Hearts have been clean sheets. It's not too by the record. Thompson. Dodd. That's four straight at Julian Vrelier, but Alan Gow is determined. He's very determined. Barassa clears it though. Kenny Milne underneath that. Now Young Scobie. 
towards Stokes. Stokes trying to spin. Belitska could be first to that, but Dodd had other ideas. <laughs> Nicely done for Craig. Stephen O'Donnell now. Half an hour played. Nil-nil. In the swirling rain at the Falkirk Stadium. Gao. And Barassa having to turn that away for a corner. There are definitely possibilities for Falkirk in the wide areas. At times, Hearts are defending very narrowly. Lati finds a pass through into Gao's feet. Tries to link up. John Hughes. Brian Rice talking. Russell Latifi delivering. Nicolunis has been held back by Thompson. Free kick. Now he's. Well, this is typical of Nicolunis. He's got the free kick and now he's had something to say about it. Yeah, unfortunately for Nicolunis, he's now got a reputation in Scotland. First and foremost, a little dive there again. And then as a custom back chat to the referee. Just a warning for Nicolunis. He's already seen red this season. Hit him for Wallace launching it towards Mole. Scobie was with him and Hearts have a corner. Hearts fans gathered behind that goal. Aguiar takes it. He might get another chance to cross again. Can Aguiar pick out this time? It's not going to be one of his teammates. But Hearts are hanging in there. Lee Wallace. Neither here nor there. We are with Hearts again on Sunday when they return to Tyne Castle to take on Rangers. It's from 1 o'clock on St. Andrew Sports 1. I wonder if Paul Hartley will start the game. I wonder if Stephen Presley will be back. Will Robbie Nilsson figure? What a good old soap opera it is. I don't even think that they know. That's the problem. The fans certainly don't know. There's only one man that does. Scobie, who's closed down by Barassa. Hearts looking for their first win in six matches. Falkirk looking for a hat-trick of SPL victories. This man, of course, Anthony Stokes has been flying. He was almost sent flying then by Zaliukas. Send that one across to towards Lee Wallace. Not that he meant to. Dodd. Belichka. Now this could open up for Hearts. Oh, he's not tried it from there, is he? I think he has. Well, we did have a go at it. We should have tried to pick out Jamie Moore instead. But Mola and Vliska have looked pretty decent so far up front. It's good movement. They have some strength there. And we know that Vliska has an eye for goal. It's going to be a little worry there for John Hughes. Well, Falkirk uh, dominant over the last quarter of an hour. But it stays nil nil. And ten minutes to go to half time. But as yet, Ian, they haven't really troubled. 
the Hearts back four are Craig Gordon. Latifi could benefit here. Karapidis did manage to uh, clear it. That's a foul by Aguirre on Craig. Kenny Mill. Knocked on by Scobie, but away by Zaniukas, one of several Lithuanians who turned up pre-season. Involved in the uh, match against Osasuna at Murrayfield. O'Donnell for Gao. This could be promising for Falkirk. Gao's cross is inviting. And the header from Stokes is straight at Gordon. Well, that's the first real chance for Falkirk. It's a good run from Gao into a wide area again. Just times his cross, gets a good one in there. Stokes has all the time in the world to size it up. And heads it straight at Craig Gordon. Well, you uh, put a bank on him. Ten goals in his last five games. Back-to-back hat-tricks in the SPL. And a goal against Celtic midweek in the League Cup. And I think he'll be looking to try and hit the back post area on that occasion. Head it back to where it came from. And catch Craig Gordon off guard, but... It was an easy one in the end for the Scotland goalkeeper. Velicka. Ambers. Didn't stop that in time. It's going to be a corner, look like it, to be fair. I'm not sure exactly what happened here. Luka tries to have a, a pot shot. I think it does go out. This could be dangerous for Falkirk. Bruno Aguiar then to deliver. Oh! That eluded everyone. How many great balls does Aguiar have to play in the box before someone puts their head on it and hits the back of the net? And how many balls have to come in before a Falkirk defender attacks it and clears it? And that's what John Hughes is asking at the moment. Great delivery from Aguiar. A nice battle as well between him and Craig in midfield. When it came through uh, Benfica's youth system, Bruno Aguiar. Started the last few games after a spell on the bench. And Darren Barr will take this. Bar up towards Gao. And ball shout against Barassa. It was rather half hearted. Looks more like a shoulder jump. Well, Barassa hasn't been frightened to tuck back in. That's never a handball. Good defensive duty work. It's a foul by Gao on Karapidis. I think that's what it's been for Hearts tonight. It's been workmanlike. We set up in the 4 4 2. It's been straightforward. I think at times Falkirk have to try and release the pace of Stokes. Maybe draw Hearts out a little bit. At times they are deep and it's hard to get in behind them. And they want so far from Gao. Knocked on by Barassa. Here's Craig. Latapi. Thompson. Kenny Mill. In towards Stokes. Lee Wallace and Christoph Berra keep him occupied. Stokes giving Berra a hard time. Too much of a hard time as it turned out. Free kick. Well, I was going to say before the game, it was a real challenge for them to be up against Stephen Presley. 
as it's turning out, it's still a real challenge against Zaliukis and Berra. I'm sure the young lad will be learning things every single game now that he's in the starting 11. He does put himself about. I like to see that from a striker. Rasa. Nicked away by Mill. God stops it reaching Nicolunas. Here's Latavi. Now Gao. Oh, Gao, terrific try. So very close to firing Falkirk in front. Apart from being good football from Falkirk, it's down to Brelia again. The first doesn't get close to Latavi and then go. If you allow Gao the chance to run at you, you'll release like this. Just misses by a foot, and I don't think Craig Gordon's getting there. It's quite obvious for me there that Brelia was just off the pace. First and foremost with Latapé, and then he let Gao on the ball too easy. Couldn't get back to him. Alan Gao got a smack in the face. But he nearly gave Hart a smack in the face with that effort. Time fast approaching. Wallace. On by Barassa for Felicka. Three kicks given against the hard striker. I wasn't sure about that one. I thought Felicka just used his body. He wanted the ball. The assistant to referee Gary Sweeney on this side gave it. Perhaps just taking a nasty one there. Yes. Both players just fending each other off, but I think Veliska uses his strength well there. It was a good play from the striker. Mm. That must have been a little bit sore. Mm. Time to wince. You can vote for your man of the match later by calling or texting, and if you agree with Scott Booth's choice and you're picked out as the winner, you get a signed shirt from the Bank of Scotland man of the match. then with this throw. Wretched weather at Falkirk. Probably not helping these players. Wet and windy. It's been a poor first half, Ian. It's not much been happening, and I'm sure going by our games recently, the second half will improve. Kobe then with this throw as we head towards the last minute. It's a foul by Valiukas. It hasn't exactly been eventful. No, and I think John Hughes will be desperate to try and get Latipi on the ball more and trying to get the ball in the wide areas more. Just like this with Gao, he's made one or two great runs on the left-hand side. Kick the verdict as Gao tangled with Zaliukas. I don't think I'm being too hard on Brelli, but he has looked just a yard off the pace at times. But he'll give everything, everything he's got. And I see he's been sitting in the stand for a couple of months now, and it's not surprising he's a little bit off the pace. Yes, his first start since September. It's not going to be any time added on here, probably because not much has happened. Mark McCurry has already looked at his whistle. And it's half time, largely incident free 45 minutes, but Felicka did have a couple of opportunities. Both of them were saved by Lambers, 
Alan Gow fired just over in response for Falkirk. But at the break in the wind and the rain, it's Falkirk nil, Hearts nil. Goalless at the Falkirk Stadium, and after we're finished here, it's the full SPL with Jim Delahunt at 10 o'clock, joined in the studio by Bobby Williamson and Jim Duffy, who will pick over uh, the entire SPL weekend, all six games reviewed by those two. Uh, that's at 10 o'clock immediately after this. No goals so far between... Uh, Falkirk and Hearts and uh, you just wonder what sort of impact on the match has been what happened beforehand and the, the shock news we brought you right at the start of the programme that Stephen Presley uh, wasn't here at all tonight and that Paul Hartley and Robbie Nielsen were starting on the bench. More uh, big changes made by Hearts and uh, the word from uh, Vladimir Romanov as well pre-match was that there would be minimal cooperation with the media. So we've got lots of questions, but not too many answers. Now, the last time Falkirk beat Hearts, these two were in opposition dugouts. Craig, we're delighted I'm reminding you about that, because uh, Falkirk won it 4-0. Yeah, and it's in the programme here in front of me as well. Do something to do that. <laughs> no, no, First thing I read when I came in, I, great. Have, have, have Falkirk been affected, I wonder, Ian, by, by what happened beforehand because it's taken them a while to get going. Well I think Craig touched on it and I mean I think it I think it must unsettle them and, and, and wh how do they react? Do, do they think well, it's go mentally surely you think it must be a little easier and did that make does that make you switch off? If you if you were to ask any folk at player to name Hart's two best players out with the goalkeeper they'd say Paul Hartley and Stephen Presley. Now therefore when they know they're not playing are they switching off a little bit? They certainly didn't start the game well that's for sure. Falkirk are a, a growing force in the game, I think, Greg, as, as the first half's gone on, and, and Hearts, who started pretty well, have, have faded out of it. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty much it, isn't it? Yeah, Hearts, Hearts started very well, had a couple of good opportunities. Goalkeeper made two decent saves. Uh, and as the game has wore on, um, Falkirk have gradually found their, their footing and they looked a little bit more threatening towards the, the end of the half. But it's probably a fair score scoreline at the moment. There's not an awful lot been happening, and, and both sides are are probably playing below what they can do. One of the features of the early stages for Hearts was a good delivery from Bruno Aguiar and a couple of chances inside the area for Andreas Velichka. Good save that, but, but could the header have been directed away from the keeper here? Well, I think it's just trying to get it on target and I think it's, it's although it looks a very spectacular save by the goalkeeper, it's actually a reasonably comfortable save. But uh, you're right, Bruno Aguiar's two or three fantastic deliveries. This was a, a diving header from Velichka this time, and there's no doubt he's a threat. There's no doubt, Craig, he is a goal scorer, isn't he? Yeah, well, his record would tell you that in recent matches, and he seems to be the kind of guy that gets in the position to pick up things that are that played into the box. He's very brave there because I believe he got, to, or obviously got a stud in the head with the, the size of that bandage that he was wearing afterwards. He was brave, went in there, and again, if it had been either side of the goalkeeper, I do believe he would have scored. Lambers was uh, solidly behind that one. We didn't see too much of Anthony Stokes in the match, but uh, gradually Falkirk have seen more and more of the ball. Russell Latipi has begun to have an influence. And this was a great ball in from Alan Gow, and Anthony Stokes placed his header straight at Greg Gordon. Yeah, well, as it happened, I said, it, it's a skill that's going out of the game. If, you know, usually when players get the byline, now they try and fire it across. You know, Alan Gow's just hung that up at the back post. I think Scott Booth said in commentary, I think he's got to try and go in, almost loop it into the far corner or play it back across goal, but it's a, a fabulous cross by Alan Gow, and, uh, but a very comfortable save for Craig Gordon. Of the Falkirk strike partnership, but uh, tended of late to be Anthony Stokes, not surprisingly, who's grabbed all the headlines, but I've been impressed uh, late on in that first half with, with Alan Gow, that was, a, that was a lovely cross for Stokes, and this was a good effort from long range from him, Craig. Yeah, he, he did hang the ball up well for that cross, and uh, it wasn't far off the target there. I think Hearts, Julian Brelli in particular, um, should have closed the ball down a little bit quicker. Uh, and especially on an evening like tonight, that, that type of shot might have, you know, if it was low, it might have bounced in front of Craig Gordon and caused them all sort of problems. So I don't think you should allow people to shoot this evening in these conditions from sort of just outside the box. John Hughes will hope that uh, the momentum continues for Falkirk into the second half. Well, I think he was the, the manager that, well, I don't know who the Hearts manager is, first of all, but uh, he was certainly the manager that didn't want to have to stop. I think that they started to play well the last 15 or 20 minutes. But I, I, I agree with Craig, I don't think either team deserves to be ahead. I don't think either team has done enough to warrant being ahead in the game. That could be this week's competition. Who's the Hearts manager, Craig? 
<laughs> and it will be the same guy next week, that's right. <laughs> yeah. But Hearts have got to, to get back to what they were doing in, in the early stages of that first half. But the point's been made in commentary as well, that there are quite a few players in that Hearts team who are short of games, and, and that, will, that will tell as the match wears on, presumably. That might have told us this half, as we're on, to be honest. Um, and you would think the longer the game goes, guys like uh, Barassa, Julian Brelli, uh, Zeliukis, who haven't played an awful lot of football, um, might begin to, to struggle a little bit. Um, I think also that one of the things that was, that was noticeable in the first, the first 20 minutes of the match, Russell Latipi, I don't think, touched the ball. Um, and gradually he's a li had a little bit more influence as the game has wore on, and I think that uh, is one of the reasons why maybe Falkirk have started to play a little bit further up the pitch, They able to re retain possession in Hearts half and, and carve out one or two half chances. Plenty of rain uh, at Falkirk but a drought in terms of goals so far. Falkirk nil, Hearts nil, and the second half is on the way. The attendance at Falkirk includes these two, Morris Malpass and Paul Hegarty, the management team at Motherwell, and they're having a look at Falkirk, who they play at Fir Park in two weeks' time as the rain continues to pour down at the Falkirk Stadium. And it's Falkirk nil, Hearts nil so far. A couple of decent chances for each team, but they haven't managed to find the breakthrough as yet. And, uh, well, you can imagine what all the, the half-time chit-chat is about, certainly among the Hearts supporters here with uh, so much drama about the team selection and the players who aren't involved tonight. Stephen Presley, presumably, watching this at home. And uh, Paul Hartley... And Robbie Nielsen are meantime on the bench for Hearts. I wonder if Paul Hartley might be utilised before too much longer. Uh, such a talent to have in reserve, and, and Hearts could certainly Craig do with his spark. Yeah, I think we might see him later on in the match, depending on whether Hearts need to, to get back into it or not. I don't think if Hearts take the lead in this match that they'll put him on. And as for... Falkirk, well, they'll be pleased with the way they finished the first half and they'll look to kick things off in similar fashion after the turnaround. I think it's just a matter of Falkirk trying to get Latte on the ball further up the pitch and make him do his work in the last third of the pitch. Falkirk nil, Hearts nil, back for the second half with Scott Booth alongside Ian Crocker. Thank you, Rob. Well, the winners tonight will make major moves up the SPL table. Jock Hughes' side will go from 8th to 5th, above Kilmarnock, above Cali Thistle, above Hibs. And Hearts, well, they could go from 4th back into 2nd place. They'd still be a long way off Celtic, of course, but they would move above Rangers and Aberdeen, who've overtaken them in a recent weeks. Yeah, and let's hope we do get that spark in the second half, and it's maybe not surprising the first half panned out the way it did, because outside Latipi and Gordon, Neither side really has a star player now. There's a lot of star players for Hearts, obviously, in the stand, sitting at home or on the bench. Well, we seem to have seen so many uh, less than impressive first halves of matches this season. And then it all kicks off in the second half. So let's hope that will be the case tonight at the Falkirk Stadium. Bruno Aguiar. interesting just picking up what the guy said in the studio as well about hearts maybe a few players who haven't played a number of games might start to feel it but it is a really young heart side this only a couple of players over 24 years old so you would think that they should be able to make 90 minutes of it Christos Karapidis getting a rare run out tonight, the Greek defender. Falkirk coming into this game on the back of an excellent run, but Edouard Malafev's hearts in pretty poor form of late without a win in five. Here's Bruno Aguiar. I think Lambert's had it covered. Well, I think the way that he's been striking the ball tonight, it's not a bad idea to have a go at it. He's never going in. Lambert's just covered it there. I think absolutely vital 
from a Falkirk point of view, is trying to get Latvia on the ball. That was mentioned at half time. Roy Keane, the Sunderland manager here tonight, watching Anthony Stokes, who actually had a trial with Sunderland uh, before Keane arrived there. Yeah, and I think a pretty ominous sign for John Hughes. It's the last thing he will want is to see Stokes leave this club so early. Pretty sure he wants to keep him till the end of the season. I think judging by Stokes' comments, well, maybe he wants to stay. It's been quiet this evening, but I think that's been down to a solid back four performance from Hearts and also coupled with not such good service from the midfield, certainly with the lack of, of ball possession for Latipe. Craig, it's cut out by Zaliukas. Here's Mikulunas. Lee Wallace. Julian Brelliet, one back by Alan Gow, who had that effort just before half time that sailed over, although not by much. Russell Latterby, Gow. Stokes trying again. But here is Mikulunas, and now Belichka, who got that uh, knock on the head in the first half, as it might have gathered. Kenny Milne, who started his career at Tyne Castle. Belich has got to get his head up in those situations. It was good play initially from Falkirk, through Latvia and then Gow and then Stokes, and you always knew Stokes was going to go for the shot. It was good defending from Hearts. Really slack play from Julian Brelier. Nicolunas. Brelier. Here's Wallace. Mole. Oh, oh, it's has caught Lambers out that he's had to push it away from the corner. There's no doubt this is a cross from Mole. It almost sneaks in, side the front post. It's good goalkeeping in the end. Aguilar's corner. Away by Scobie. It's another great ball in from Aguilar. Just begging for someone to put their head on it. Once again, plenty for the Hearts fans to talk about in the talks around Gorgie tonight. Stephen Presley left out of the squad. And Paul Hartley and Robbie Nielsen left on the bench. I think the difference at half-time in the dressing rooms is that John Hughes will know that he can get more out of his side. He'll know what they, how they can perform, but from a Hearts point of view, you're not really sure exactly how far this particular side can go. Mill. Away by Berra. Latapi. Julian Brenner with a foul. Free kick for Falkirk in a very decent position. It's just a silly foul to give away. He's never getting the ball. Sticks a leg in, and this is dangerous for Hearts. Also, Latapi standing over it. Alan Gow is there with him. What a cracking position. Hawker looking for a breakthrough early in the second half. It's Russell Latapi, and it went some. But Craig Gordon equal to it. Tell you what, that's a great save. Fantastic strike. Donald with a rather wayward header, and Michael is now racing away for Hearts. 
Jimmy Mole is calling for it over on the other side. Lee Wallace lost his footing. And Fokker will get the throw. Oh, he just really gets a hold of this one. That's pretty straight at Gordon. He deals with it well. It wasn't quite as good a save as I first thought. It's a great strike from Latipe. Well, that would have rubbed it in. Russell Latipe scored three goals in six Edinburgh derbies when he was at Hibs, including that uh, famous cracker in that famous 6-2 win. Sorry, Hearts fans, for entering that one. Thompson has taken a knock. Curry wants a word with Dodd. We had a bit to say about this. Thompson on the ball. I think it's just the fact that Agua comes across, but there's not too much in that. Tonight's uh, crowd, boosted by Hearts contingent, 6,289. Their second highest attendance of the season, Paul Kirk. Their highest was for the visit of Celtic. The crowds for Monday night matches have been good. Yeah, it would be nice if we could liven them up a little bit <laughs> with a goal or two in this one. Going back to the point that Ian McCall has made, and just look at Hearts at the moment, they definitely are a shadow of the side of last season. Absolutely nowhere near it. Free kick given against Brilliant. Well, it's crying out for somebody like him, really. Paul Hartley still stuck on the bench. Well, it really is. There's no pace and drive from midfield at the moment. Two sitting midfield players. Aguiar's playing well, but Brelli is off the pace. And it is just crying out for Paul, for Paul Hartley to come on and change it slightly for Hearts. But whether he'll actually make it on the park, I don't know. Well, you suspect they might be a bit stubborn about it. Another crazy day for Hearts. Here's Nicolunis. We are fell over. Falkirk had a good start to the season, picked up seven points in the first nine, fell away a bit, but back on track now and they've tried to uh, play some blowing football. And more credit to John Hughes for that, they have succeeded. Yeah, and a, a draw tonight wouldn't be a terrible result, result for them because they have picked up enough points to this point in the season. But I'm sure that John Hughes will definitely see it as a chance to take all three tonight. Yes, they haven't really shown what they can do yet. But there's still time. Ten minutes into the second half. Latifi. He's at the centre of so much of their good work. He's taking on... Wallace and Brelier, and now he's found Alan Gow, Stokes, Scobie, he's got a bit to do, Belitska's back defending, Anthony Stokes, the unknown gunner, Gow, situation, a red by Zaliukas, that was clever play from Stokes, Initially, great vision from Latifi again, driving forward on the right-hand side, having enough time to spy the pass inside to go. Sariukas playing at centre half tonight has stepped in there, but it's up towards Stokes. Latifi, 38 years of age, 
part of the coaching staff here as well. Aguiar. Barassa. Michelunas challenging with Dodd, who came on in the first half, the injured Jack Ross. Jamie Mole laying that off for Aguiar. Michelunas. Aguiar. And Velichka might fancy a bit of that, but he was closely watched. That's a late one from Scobie on Barasso. Might get a card for this. Tam Scobie. Yeah, I think it was pretty reckless from Scobie. The ball's coming at a real pace. To be fair, I think he actually gets good contact on the ball. And what's Barassa doing? It's, it's a ridiculous fall from Barassa. Probably enough just to get Scobie in the book. First yellow card of the game. Felicca lurking, Aguiar, Saliukas trying to send it back, but it's gone out. Edouard Malafev is the man in charge of hearts, well, for this hour. Well, if he's asking or telling players on the bench and his management staff there's just not enough quality in the park, and that's exactly what's happened at the moment, there isn't enough quality in the hearts team. Just got to look at the bench, and I just don't understand. When you have a player of Paul Hartley's quality just behind you, how you can shout and scream like that. I have to say, Hearts ha seem to have one of the biggest uh, backroom staff ever in world football. They were swarming around the tunnel before the match, and none of them want to talk to us. <laughs> Take action here. And it's going to be a yellow card for Aguiar. Well, Aguiar doesn't agree. But he's a type of player that plays on the edge. And that's definitely over the edge. Deserve booking there for Aguiar. Got the Manny Court. Two quick yellow cards in the game for Scobie and Aguiar. But still no sign of a goal as we hit the hour mark. That's come off Zaliukas. Barassa trying to rescue it. Lunas. Now Lee Wallace. He's lost out to Dodd though, a bit too easily. Free kick for Kurt. There's no real direction in the heart side. Wallace getting on the ball there, not really sure whether to go forward or turn back. Well, Jamie Mill is going to capitalise on this. Scobie sent it back. But O'Donnell to the rescue. Paul Kirk have already changed one of their full backs in this game when Jack Ross went off injured in the first half. Word for the touch on is they're about to change the other with uh, Mark Toro waiting to come on for this man. Scobie has been booked. And he's getting himself into another tangle there. And Karapidis. Yeah, this is par for the course for this game. Very scrappy indeed. 
Karapiras has ventured forward a number of times down that right side. And just holding the leg of Scobie. In fact, there's going to be a double change with uh, Liam Craig also coming on, so John Hughes is going to use up all his substitutes with just less than half an hour to go. And he's eager to do that straight away. So, uh, as mentioned, Scobie's going off and Mark Twaddle will come on at left back, missed the Celtic game in the week with an ankle problem. And Stephen O'Donnell has been hooked as well. And he's going to be replaced by Liam Craig, who came from Ipswich at the start of the year. And they always give the young players a good grounding. Craig, who managed to get himself sent off earlier in the season, even though he wasn't actually playing on the pitch. He was a sub at Easter Road in that crazy game in September when he got a bit involved with the Ips fans. Chris question that in years to come. I think it's just like for like with Falkirk. Obviously John Hughes making a double substitution, thinking that that is what this game needs to bring it to life. Here we are. First contribution from Craig is to clear that. The rain, at least, seems to have relented. For a little while, anyway. Sadly, the uh, scrappiness of this game has not relented. Kenny Mill. Helped on by Craig. And there's always a free kick coming sooner or later there, and I think Mike McCurry's going to have a word with the Leechka for the earlier challenge. Yeah, I think Leechka has felt that he's had a few on him. That's just reckless. And eventually, Falkirk do get the free kick. Is Brellier. Normally the Hearts fans would be delighted to see him in, in the team tonight, but of course the circumstances over the uh, choice of players out there rather overshadowing that. Stephen Presley bombed out. Paul Hartley left on the bench. Mystifying, really. And you really do wonder where Hearts go from here. Go second in the table, actually, if they win tonight. <laughs> and here's Aguiar, who might just open things up. Velichka. Oh, Velichka has squeezed it in. He's now scored Hart's last five goals, and they have the lead here at Falkirk, despite it being another crazy day in the life of Hart. Well, he certainly has looked the most likely tonight. Had a number of attempts, and he cuts inside, he takes it so early, and it catches Lambers out. It's poor goalkeeping. At least he gets on this, and he, he just wants to cut inside and go for a strike. It's a good strike, but should never beat Lambers. And it's just the fact that he takes it so early. Touch inside, near post. Lambers has to get across and get his body behind it. At least he's delighted. Six goals in the last seven games for Andreas Velichka. You might question uh, some of the Lithuanians who play in this Hearts team, but you can't question him at the moment. He's coming up with the goals time and again. Oh, he's looked good, looked very, very good. Real physique. As I mentioned at half-time, he does have an eye for a goal. Not scared to go in with it. Hearts cut inside there. He just knew he was going to strike it. It was very early. Here's Craig. Brenier got his body in the way. Paul Kurt not really firing tonight. Craig, Latifi, Thompson. Craig and 
Trey Gordon just about held on. Just shows you, you really have to have more strikes tonight. It's so difficult to handle with the ground being so wet, and that just falls right at Craig Gordon between his legs. Can't quite get it in his hands, and you're just expecting Gao or Stokes to follow up. Feliska in the wars, I think he just gets caught with his hand or the back of his, his calf. Whatever, he doesn't look too pleased. Ah, I think Craig just stands on his fingers. Just a few minutes earlier, this is what he did. He cut inside, and he asked questions of Lambers. And Lambers didn't have the answer. It's a great strike. And Credit to Grelly as well. Earlier in that move, he won the ball. We've been negative towards him slightly this, this game, but he did win possession. He fed Bruno Aguiar, and he fed Velitska. It was 1-0. Well, Jerome Lambers uh, only got into the team when Scott Higgins made uh, some errors at Cali Thistle recently. Lambers letting that one slither through. No sign that Paul Hartley's coming on just yet. They were about to, in fact, they got to Juho Michaela strip, but then Edward changed his mind. And each was back on, he's certainly a game player, I'm not afraid to go in where it hurts. I think as Craig Levine said at half time, that could be all over for the night for Paul Hartley. Been one of Falkirk's better showings, that's for sure. And Hearts against the backdrop of another baffling team selection have the lead and could be jumping above the Rangers and Aberdeen and back into second place. You can vote for your man of the match by calling or texting us later. And if you agree with Scott Boo's choice and you're picked out as the winner, you'll get a signed shirt from the man of the match himself and with the goal scorer. A contender. I think at the moment John Hughes will be seeing it as a missed opportunity because the game certainly was there to be taken by the scruff of the neck. And Falkirk haven't done that. Velichka is chasing this. And Twaddle held him up and Velichka felt he was foul. It certainly was contact, but I don't think Velichka really had the pace to get past. Waddle certainly holds his arm up, but Lichka makes too much of it. Lichka now getting jeered by the Falkirk fans. Lichka has scored Hart's last five goals, and he could have had more than that. A few chances went astray at Celtic last week before he did score, of course Hart let the lead slip there, what will happen here tonight with 20 minutes to go. I think from a Hart's point of view as well, you have to look at the input of Mikkel Yunus and Barassa tonight, I have to ask a big question why Paul Hartley can't play either side in there, certainly not that he's not a better player. Twaddle, Zaliukas. Met him. Well, even if Hearts do win tonight, it's not going to paper over the considerable cracks in the camp. Paul Kirker having an off night. I think the whole point is that Hearts do still have good players on the park and and they will get wins. It's just if you keep changing the team like this, they'll be inconsistent. 
that's been proven so far this season. Can't be consistent in getting three points. Far too many changes. I think they have looked in this game like they've been a team not quite in disarray, but really who don't know each other too well. As I say, they have quality on the park. So they will get the odd victory. Actually, in their 22 matches this season, there's only been the 85 changes, to be fair. <laughs> it's not too bad, is it? <laughs> Aguia. Maybe Mole. Oh, he's in mistake from Trottle. And a fine stop from Lambers that time. Or it could have been game over for Falkirk. No goal for Mole. Yeah, it was good defending from Lambers. Good goalkeeping. He stands tall. And what a chance from Mole. He has to put this away. Anywhere low and hard into the side of the goalkeeper. And it's a goal. And I would say that would be the game over. But with 1-0, there's always a chance for Falkirk. And Hearts will know that. Barassa has intercepted that pass from Craig, which has left Trottle out of position because he'd gone forward. Kenny Milne, though, mutually reliable. Here's Craig. Latifi. Offside against Stokes. Well, they were going to bring him on five minutes ago. They told him to put his tracksuit back on. And now, Edouard Malafeb is giving him instructions. And he is going to come on. Yuho Michaela, the Finnish striker. John McGlynn having a word too. Jamie Mole, we're here. We had that chance a moment ago. Yeah, it was a golden opportunity to put this game beyond Falkirk. He didn't take it. Probably his last chance of this game. over a quarter of an hour remaining and Hearts on course at the moment for second spot but then they thought they were on course for a, what would have been a deserved victory over Celtic last week and that all went wrong so Jamie Knowles last contribution was that uh, effort that was saved by Lambers the youngster replaced by Juho Michaela who scored a hat-trick in the League Cup at Alloa this season and also scored in his first league start at Dundee United Home to Dundee United. Just watching Russell Latipi there, he's asking his full backs to get the ball into him. Obviously, feels that he's not been enough involved enough in this game. I think that has been the problem for Falkirk. They have looked far too obvious at times. Stokes, the Arsenal whiz kid, trying to inspire Falkirk again, but it's just not quite happening. And Stokes being watched tonight by. Roy Keane, the Sunderland manager, who scored his only goal for Celtic against Falkirk, not here though, at Celtic Park. I'm sure he won't be looking at just one game from Stokes. That's not been the best that Stokes has played this season, that's for sure. The service hasn't been great either. You can see at times Latifé, Gao and Stokes. Even as a three, they look isolated up front. The midfield and the fullbacks just can't get them in the play. Carapetus. Latifi, Stokes, Latifi again, and Falkirk get their act together, Stokes, 
Craig, trottle outside of him. And that's a big try to flick. Yeah, it's just far too tight in there for Falkirk. So difficult to try and play your way through the centre of this heart side. You have to try and get the ball wide, create more movement from the front three to drag the Hearts defence around. John McGlynn has been pretty much a constant on the uh, Hearts, or in the Hearts dugout, throughout uh, Vladimir Romanos' time at the club. He's a stayer. I was told before the game that he doesn't have enough authority to actually answer any questions pre-match or post-match. It's definitely not a good sign. Well, Hearts uh, once again uh, refusing to say much tonight. Not making anyone available for interview pre-match. Craig Gordon is going to gather that, and Gordon keeping his place in the side, even if Hartley didn't, and Presley didn't. Can't wait to see what team they pick on Sunday. Hearts against Rangers is on Satanta Sports 1 from 1. Two teams, two clubs who've certainly had their fair share of stories to tell this season. Thompson. Craig has lost it. Jalia charging. But a fine intervention from Darren Barr. Now Stokes. Heading towards goal. Stokes stopped by Dera. Here's Twaddle. And now Liam Craig. And it keeps coming back. Thompson. That's a feat. Get the feeling we're having one of those nights. Yeah, I think it was virtually the first time that Falkirk got wide through Stokes. Good movement on the left hand side that they created the chance. Todd has been tripped. Now, a big chance here for Falkirk. Well, there's a bit of a set to there between Barasso and Todd. McCurry quickly intervened. I think Valichka might have to go back a bit here. Falkirk hoping that something might happen here. Ten minutes to go. Mark McCurry, first of all, wants Aguiar and Barassa back ten yards. So Latterby to take it, and Craig Gordon to fist it away for the throw. That was good goalkeeping, he took responsibility. Should the centre halves would be happy with that. Todd then getting ready to take this throw. but can they salvage something from a fairly miserable night? Latterby. He's giving them the run around. Latterby! Trey Gordon to the rescue for Hearts. Yet again, as he so often has been this season. There's a lot of responsibility on Craig Gordon's shoulders, but also Latterby. He's just brilliant at this. He checks in from the right-hand side. Again, the early strike, it's a good strike. Gordon gets across to make the save. Oh, 
corner has gone right into the mix and Gordon is cancelling again. Cracking delivery from Gao. Well, that could have gone anywhere, and I think it's Stokes that gets the final touch. Believe it or not, he just can't get enough on it. Apart from that, Ian, you have to say that Hearts have looked fairly comfortable so far for all the possession that Falkirk have had. Hearts set to go second in the table. But they will still be 13 points behind Celtic. Curry's going to check on Velichka's bandage here. I think he wants a bit more patching up done. Last chance for you to vote for your man of the match. Those are the numbers to call or text. And if your choice agrees with Scott and you're picked out as the winner, you'll get a signed shirt from the Bank of Scotland man of the match. I think even if the score does stay the same, and even with the win from Hearts, there'll still be a lot of questions being asked tomorrow. Of headlines to be made. His gal and Russell Latape. Yes, Latape with an equaliser for Falkirk. And just to rub it in, a former Hibs man scores against Hart. It just shows you as soon as you see that Hearts have looked comfortable, they're not anymore. And it's Latapé, he deserves a goal. He gets on the end of it, look at that for a finish. He just places it, he passes it into the net. It's low and it's hard, it's always going to be difficult for Craig Gordon to get down to it. It's great initial play from Guy, look at the way he turns inside here. Good vision, gets his head up, picks the pass out. Latapé knows where the goal is. It's right in behind Craig Gordon. Well, a man who often tormented Hart in his hips days, scored in that famous 6-2 win. The 38-year-old on target tonight, and Mike McCurry having a word with the Hearts dugout and with the fourth official. I don't think uh, you understand uh, much of what's being said from Edouard Malafed down there. Now, did Belichka come up on too early? We're not sure, we'll find out. John Hughes has seen his side draw level and of course Hart let a lead slip last week at Celtic and Malafed is going to be ordered off here by Mike McCurry and this is just another twist in a quite extraordinary tale Edouard Malafed who did an extraordinary interview the other week is now banished from the dugout and it just gets weirder and stranger the heart of Midlothian. Well, there goes another manager for Hearts. <laughs> I wonder if he'll be back. Well, they tried to get uh, Velichka back on, and the fourth official couldn't allow it, of course. Velichka was getting treatment, and Malafair grabbed hold of the fourth official. has been ordered away. Basically, it's just been another ordinary day in the life of Hearts. that Malafé actually grabbed the fourth official by the neck as well. <laughs> Not surprised. Crazy. Making a football sense. Hearts have let this slip. Well, they lost at Celtic last week after being ahead. Two late goals there. Now Latapé. And he's got a free kick off Aguiar. Aguirre that gets closest to midfield. Been a bit busy for Mike McCurry lately. It's going to be Russell Latimer to take this. Darren Ball is getting in a tangled end with Zaniukas. 
sense of his free kick, headed up in the air by Zaniukas, but that'll cause problems. Not many problems, though. Well, having said that Falkirk may have taken a draw tonight, and now looks the other way round. Barassa's throw now for Michaela. Here's Belichka. We hear from the fourth official, John McKendrick, that uh, Edouard Malafer ran up, bars him in the back, grabbed him. So a little wonder that he was sent from the dugout. something happening every minute with Hearts. The night when Stephen Presley was left out of the squad, when Paul Hartley was left on the bench, when the players seemed as baffled by the team selection when they arrived here as the fans probably have been. And we are, we'll get the free kick and Dodd Felt he got the ball, but he must have got a fair bit of the man, too. Yeah. Yeah, Aguirre has put himself about tonight. He's got on the ball, he's made passes. He's also got close in midfield. His delivery's been good. We now hear that Edouard uh, Malafeb has not decided to... Uh, decided not to go upstairs. He's going mad in the dressing room about the decision to send him away. Anyway, back to the football. Aguiar takes it. Oh, it's a bit of a scramble. And it's been deflected wide. Karapidis had the shot. Bruno Agua cannot believe it. It's another great ball in. The initial contact there. You just can't quite hit the target. I'm not sure who gets the last touch. I think it hits, hits off Michaela. It goes behind. And Aguiar had his head in his hands, couldn't believe it. Oh, Barras has got a yellow card now. <laughs> oh dear, it's all happening. 90 minutes are almost up. There's only going to be two minutes added on. I think it, at the end it's a fair result. 1-1. Falkirk had the most possession in the game. Eventually managed to get the goal through Latape. Initially it was chances for Hearts. Valiska was the man who finally took one. It's been a fairly even contest. With not too much imagination in it. John Hughes urging his team forward for the last minute and a half. We're into three minutes of added on time. Kirk and Hart drew earlier in the season at Tynecastle. And now they may be on course for a share of the points again. Thompson, though. And taking a bit of a bubble. And Julian Brellier is uh, down now. Yeah, it's cramped. Not surprisingly. It's a wet night, slippery surface, it's the first game in a long time. Asking to be taken off, taken off at this point now. Nicolinis. Here's Craig. And Falkirk's natural eight winner against Haas, just as Celtic did last week. Will it be a carbon copy? Craig. Here's Anthony Stokes. He's had a fairly quiet evening. Despite his run of goals lately. Here's Velichka. Continued scoring for Hearts. Here's Michalunas. Oh, Hearts could be in the hunt for a late winner themselves. Barassas drilled it across and Lambers will report to it. It's a 
great cross comes short from Barassa. We're in the last minute of stoppage time. Here's Liam Craig. That's a few away to his left. No surprise that it goes to him. That's a few across for Stephen Thompson. And now Anthony Stokes. Is it going to go in? Gow! And last is defending from Karapidis. I cannot believe it. Latipe just works his way across. Finally feeds. Stokes gets on it. It's a nice touch inside. You're just looking for someone to get a foot on it. Get a strike on target. It's scrappy. It's going to be a change. Brelier going off. And Paul Hartley's getting on for the last three seconds or so. That's incredible. That's insulting. That's disrespectful. It really is. It's Russell Latterby's corner. Can Forkirk snatch a winner? No, it's over the head of Stokes and away. Well, Paul Hartley got to see a bit of action, but only a small bit. Well, it's been another extraordinary evening for those connected with Hearts. I'm sure their fans have had plenty to say about what's gone on today. Largely off the build, but also on it. It ends 1-1. Russell Latterby to the rescue, the man who tormented Hearts in his days at Hibs. Likewise, John Hughes, in fact, got the equaliser after Velitska had continued his recent scoring spree for Hearts. The football tonight was never really going to grab the headlines, though, just as well, because there actually wasn't much of it. But Velitska's strike deceived Lambers. He's now scored Hearts' last five goals. But a late equaliser came from Russell Latifi, but Hearts are going to grab all the headlines again. Stephen Presley left out, Paul Hartley left on the bench until the last few seconds, and Edward Malafair banished from the dugout for grabbing the fourth official. So much to ponder on tonight. Stay tuned for some sort of reaction. It ends 1-1. A night on which the big headlines were made pre-match as Yogi's Falkirk took on Hearts in disarray with Paul Hartley and Robbie Nielsen among the substitutes. Stephen Presley wasn't here at all. Andreas Velichka's header was saved by Lambers in the first half and Andy Stokes passed up that chance to get Falkirk in front. Watched by Edward Malafiv, he used to have his moment a little bit later. And this was Andreas Velichka. I'm sure he didn't expect that to find its way in. Lambers got his gloves to it, but couldn't keep it out. Hearts were ahead. Could they hold their advantage? Answer, no. Russell Latterby simply passed this one in, and that was 1-1. And after that, the sporting director was shown the door, having uh, manhandled the fourth official. Hearts we're under real pressure here, and what a chance for Alan Gow to grab all three points for Falkirk. His expression tells all. A uh, point apiece for Falkirk and the Hearts. 1-1 it finished, and here's what that means in the Bank of Scotland Premier League. Rangers stay second on goals scored because they and Hearts have exactly the same goal difference. So that point takes Hearts up to 22, level with Rangers and with Aberdeen on that mark. But still, of course, 15 adrift of SPL leaders Celtic. So it's another good night for Gordon Strachan. Falkirk stay where they were in the bottom half of the table despite a four-match unbeaten run from them. So, Falkirk uh, won, Hearts won, and uh, a fair bit of excitement in the second half. It wasn't a, a thing of great beauty, I think you'd agree, that game, but uh, in the end, it's a, a share of the spoils, although Alan Gow is left to rue that uh, late missed opportunity. With me in the studio, the former managers of Falkirk and Hearts, Ian McCall and Craig Levine, and, well, Falkirk could have done it right at the end. Yeah, I, I don't think it just fell behind, behind Gow, and uh, they certainly pressed for the, for the winner. Magnificent, uh, you know, wasn't a night for great football, but magnificent goal by, by Latipe. The build-up play was excellent as well, and I thought they thoroughly merited the point. Are Hearts happy with the point, Craig, do you think? 
I always think if you're in front in a match and you get a draw, then it's a, a little bit of a disappointment. I think before the match, with all the goings on um, and uh, everything surrounding tonight's match, I, I don't think a point is a disaster for them. There's a sense of unreality, Ian, about the game because of uh, what we knew was, was going on ahead of it. Yeah, the antics and the touchline didn't help. That was comedy stuff. Yeah, yeah, there was. I mean, it, it, the Hearts fans, I think, found it quite hard to get behind their team tonight. It, you know, they burst out into song for Brelly, for Hartley, for these guys. Uh, so it was a bit of a surreal game. But uh, I, I think, as I said, a draw was probably fair. I know, Craig, that you're towing the diplomatic line tonight, um, but the Hearts fans must be desperate for answers about what's going on here at the moment. Yeah, you're probably right. Um, but how those answers... Um, Manifest himself. I don't, I don't know uh, because obviously now that uh, that, that Hearts are, are uh, not too keen to discuss things with uh, with the media, then you know I think very much the man to speak to is Mr. Romanov. Um, he's the only one that knows everything, but he doesn't seem to to, to be wanting to, to speak at this moment in time, which is frustrating for for the Hearts fans. But you have to remember as well, the Hearts fans will be a little bit worried about uh, the situation. They don't want to criticise or overly criticise Mr. Romanov because they know that the, the club is in very much in his hands. Well, we're getting minimal cooperation from Vladimir Romanov. He told us that himself uh, through his henchmen uh, pre-match. Let's see if we can get any answers out of Craig Gordon. He's with Stuart Lovell. Craig, with all the stuff that happened off the pitch before the game, I guess it was easy to forget there was a game tonight. Yeah, just about, but uh, the boys that went out there are giving everything they had. There's a few boys I hadn't played for, for quite a while, and uh, I think that, that told towards the end of the game, but uh, you can't deny that, it, that uh, all the boys put everything they had into the game. Yeah, there was certainly a lot of spirit showed by the Hearts team, and were you a little bit disappointed to, to not win the game? Yeah, I think so. We've had the, the chances, I think, at... Uh, Falkirk have had a, a wee chance near the end as well from, from quite close and Christos got a great block on so there was chances at both ends to, to win the game and uh, I think we probably just edged it in the, the quality chances but uh, you know we, we didn't finish them off and, uh, and Falkirk came back with a, a good goal. What did you think was that would have been the fair result over the piece because you, you had a lot of possession particularly in the second half but I, I guess maybe a draw a fair result? Yeah I think so, I think that uh, both teams put a lot into the game and, and both teams had spells on top, so uh, I don't think anybody will complain about a draw. Thanks for your time. Cheers, thank you. Craig Gordon, the, the Hearts goalkeeper, uh, pretty tight lipped there because uh, the instructions were, you probably guessed it yourself, he was told to speak only about the game. There was to be no chat, minimal cooperation, I think this is the in phrase at the moment uh, with the media. Uh, he was told not to discuss team selection and uh, the bizarre goings on behind the scenes, both at Rickerton and at Tyne Castle as well. Craig Gordon, of course, was one of the, the famous Rickerton three alongside uh, Stephen Presley and Paul Hartley, who spoke out a few weeks back against the current Hearts regime and of course the upshot it seems for Stephen Presley tonight was that he didn't feature at all and we're told he walked out at Tyne Castle when he was told what the team was going to be for tonight. Paul Hartley w was on the bench, Craig Gordon started, there was no sign of Steve Banks uh, in the squad at all although he was here tonight and uh, it seems he was given no great explanation as to why he wasn't involved uh, and I guess the the final ignominy uh, for, for Paul Hartley tonight was, was to be brought onto the pitch for 33 seconds at the end. What did that mean? Well, I mean, it, Craig Gordon said it there, there's a lot of tired players out there. You've got an international class midfielder. You know, perhaps if you put him on earlier, you'll hold on and you'll win the game and, and Falkirk wouldn't finish as strongly because they've got that, you know, that Paul's non-stop style in the middle of the pitch. I don't know if it's embarrassing for Paul Hartley to go on at that time, but it, it's certainly very, very strange. Two of Hearts' better players on the night were Bruno Aguiar and Andreas Vilicka up front, and these two combined to have the first crack at goal. Yeah, they combined fairly regularly at set pieces uh, this evening. We talked about this in the first half. I think there's two of these opportunities that Vilicka's hit the target with, but unfortunately for him, both were directly at, uh, at the goalkeeper. And the only one that he didn't put at the goalkeeper to either side of him was, uh, was the one that he scored with. And, uh, um, I think overall tonight, I think Valicia had a pretty good match. Yeah, this was the other one from him, a diving header this time, and again, Lambert's got behind it. Yeah, I, I was impressed with him tonight. I've seen him two or three times, and he, he always seems to take up decent positions in the box. You know, he just gambles in front of people, and he's very unlucky there because he's just trying to get anything on that. And uh, as Craig said, either side of the goalkeeper, that's a goal. So the goalkeeper saving from Valicia uh, this time. It was, a, it was a good effort, the ball skidding off the turf 
uh, a good effort on goal and solidly behind it was Lambert as well. Anthony Stokes doesn't score a goal, shocker, I guess is one of the, the subplots going on tonight. This was uh, Stokes getting his head to a, a back post cross from Alan Gow, uh, and he would have expected to have done a little bit better here. Yeah, well, it's a magnificent cross from Alan Gow, he stands up at the back post there really well, and you know, young Anthony Stokes, I think he goes for power, tries to put it in the deck, but you, you rarely beat Craig Gomez, it's rarely he gets his angles wrong in, in that area, and I think if he's going to score from there, he's got to try and loop it to the far post where the, where the, the space in the goal is. But a lovely ball by Alan Gow and uh, comfortable save in the end. Christoph Berra takes up a good position here as well. He just covers his goalkeeper for anything that did go across the face of the goal. So it would have to be, a, as you mentioned, a looping header more than anything else to score there. He's got a great left foot, Gow. We saw the cross from him there. And uh, the shot here towards the end of the first half struck it well, just a little bit too high. Yeah, and, and we saw with um, uh, Galicka's goal, anything that skidded off the tough was a problem uh, this evening. That was a decent strike, always just that little bit too high. Um, but, I mean, I think he played fairly well tonight, Alan Gow. I thought he was very positive when he got the ball, and, and I do believe he, was, he set up uh, Russell Latipi's goal as well. Into the second half, one or two top quality contributions from Russell Latipi tonight. You expect that when you watch Falkirk. Uh, Russell Latipi went very close with uh, a free kick early on in the second half. Of course, he was to have a big say on the game later on. That's a great strike. But I think what Russell tries to do, they try to kick across the ball usually to try and bend it back. And he's caught that one really clean. And it, it, you know, in the end, it's, it's, although it's really well struck, it's a comfortable save for a, for a goal of, his, of Gordon's calibre. 20 minutes into the second half and Hearts broke through and it was Andreas Velichka. It was a good strike, but surely Jerome Lambert, having got a good glove to it, should have kept this out. Well, I think if you've watched Velichka play in recent weeks, he's very direct. He runs at people and he shoots on sight. And as soon as he picked this up, I think Ian said, we'll go and run at him. And uh, he does exactly that because that's, that's what he's been seen to do in recent weeks. Um, and it's about knowing your players and, and you know, we're sitting here, we could tell that he was going to have a strike at goal and I think the goalkeeper should have known that as well. I think you see the goalkeeper, he doesn't move his feet, you know, he just, he just dies from, from quite a distance away. Really he's got to move his feet you know, a couple of quick steps and then move and if he does that it's a comfortable save but Yogi won't be happy with that goal, there's no doubt about that. And I don't think he'd be too happy with the defending here which offered Jamie Mole uh, an opportunity and had he nailed this one then it could have been curtains for Falkirk. Yeah, it's just a, a basic error. And I think Jamie will be disappointed with his finish here as a side, well, this should be a side foot pass. You know, Russell Latterby in the minute will show exactly how it's done. But uh, that should have been a side foot pass either side of the goalkeeper, who's been shown earlier on he didn't move his feet particularly well. I think anything round about his feet here would have been a goal. And of course what invariably happens when one team fails to take a chance like that and kill off the game is that the other team heads up the pitch. Ten minutes later it was 84 minutes and, well, this is top quality, isn't it, the way Russell had to be passed this into the net? Well, as Craig said, I think Gow's contribution shouldn't be underestimated, but usually when you pass a ball in the net, the ball coming from that direction, it's easier to do it with your left foot, you know, and bring it back from, it, from outside the post, but Russell does it with his right foot and, you know, that has to be absolutely perfect to score there. Fantastic finish. Well, interesting, look who's marking, look at Michaelinas here. Standing five yards behind him, all he needs to do is run back five yards to pick him up, and he stops him getting a shot at goal. But you know, that's taken nothing away from the quality of the finish. The only player on the park, I think, who had the ability to do that was, was Russell Latipi. Yeah, and of course, what followed that was that Edward Malofiev uh, was, was sent off the pitch. I don't think he ever got to the stand. He ended up in the dressing room where he was, I think, ranting and raving away to, to himself. But he was manhandling fourth official John McKendrick. And, and Hearts don't need any more off field problems. No, I, he seems a fiery character. I think you had an interview with him. He's quite entertaining. <laughs> he seems a fiery character. <laughs> he displayed he's that. He's getting the wish out of me. I'll tell you, standing in front of him. Well, let's have a look at uh, Alan Gow's chance in stoppage time 93 minutes. And he knew, you could see from his reaction, he could have got all three points here. Yeah, it's a decent chance. It was good build-up play by Falker. I mean, it's the best part of the game in the last 15 minutes. And Stokes does well here. You know, he's actually he's wanting it on his, his foot early to shoot there, but he cuts it back. It's quite an awkward one there, though. It's behind uh, Alan Gow, and it's decent defending as well. So the chance missed by Alan Gow, and Falker just there could have turned one point into three, but it finished one all at the Falker Stadium. Man of the match, as voted by Scott Booth, was Bruno Aguirre, the Hearts midfielder. Gary Wilkie from Kirkcaldy picked him out as well, and uh, a signed Aguirre shirt is heading your way, Gary. Let's hear from the Falkirk manager, John Hughes. Well, John, do you think your team thought it would be easier playing against a weaker Hearts team tonight? 
It was. Well, any Hearts team's uh, formidable. Uh, I think you saw that in the first half. They come with a game plan to really press us, and our passing game was not at its best. And I think we've got our goalkeeper to thank for keeping us in the match in the first half, uh, to come in uh, you know, with a clean sheet. And, you know, I was quite relieved. But in the second half, I think you saw the best of Falkirk. And um, I think we could have went on and won the match. And all credit to the boys for coming back after going a goal down uh, to dig it out, come a goal back, and we could have went on to win it in the end. You talked about the creativity of Russell Latapi before the game, but you never really got the ball to him tonight. No, and I say at half time, you know, we felt they were playing a 4 4 2. We felt switches of play uh, would have got us in all day. And I think that was evident when we brought Big, Big Twaddle on uh, as substitute. He was getting up and doing that left hand side. And you were getting the ball to him, and I felt he could have got us back in the match. Just with maybe taking the boy on, getting a crossing. Uh, but, you know, you see the quality of Russell. I think he had a left foot drive. Uh, ten minutes before it and Gordon tipped it around the post and then just a side, simple side foot uh, right in the bottom corner and I was delighted with it uh, and I'm delighted for the boys because you know it keeps, we've been unbeaten in three now that keeps the unbeaten run going But when you sit down and think about this match and you look at the Hearts lineup, will you feel like it was an opportunity missed? Yeah definitely, especially at our place in the forum that we were on, we're playing with confidence and I say that to the boy, I just I felt, I don't know if it was a Hearts team selection, I say that before the game, you know, I'd link, to, I'd link for all the big hitters to be in there because uh, you know what you're up against, um, but I say to the boys before the game, we have to go and play our game uh, 